better at home in baseball than are the Red Sox offensively. And last night they showed it. They scored at least one run in all of the first seven innings of the ball game. In every which way, the Orioles never got in. Tonight, Dylan Bundy will try and change all that. Game two of the three game set, the battle for the division lead continues at Fenway Park. It's the Orioles on Masson, and we welcome you back to Boston. Yet another beautiful evening, and this is game two as the Orioles took the loss last night with the Red Sox jumping out early and not looking back. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and welcome. The race continues. It is a race for the division lead. The Red Sox have that right now. The Orioles want it, and what they'll try and do is take two out of three here in Boston. Always looking for that magic number in baseball. What is the stat? that lines up with the standings that tells you how good a team is or isn't. Well, this one, it may seem like a simple Simon answer, but it's not talked about that way very often. It's the run differential. Take a look at the teams who have the best run differential in Major League Baseball. What do they have in common? They are all winning teams at the top of their divisions or very close to it. You got the Cubs, Red Sox, Nationals, Indians, and Blue Jays. Those are the top run differentials in Major League Baseball. The Orioles at a plus 25 are ranked 11th. They are the distinction amongst that group. Not that high a run differential, but still in the race. Why does it tell you that, Mike? I think it's because run differential is about a balance. It's about how many you're scoring and how many you're not giving up, and that's the name of the game. Absolutely, and the uh, Red Sox have had marginal pitching, to say the least. They're starting to pitch a lot better here the last 30 games or so, but it's their offense that's really carried them and put them in this spot. 802 runs they've scored to this point. They continue this pace. They're going to score over 900 runs and put them up in one of the elite Boston Red Sox offenses in all time. So uh, it's a very productive offense. They're dangerous top to bottom right now. They have about five red hot hitters in this lineup. So Dylan Bundy has really got to attack this offense. They, he has to be aggressive, but aggressive pitching in. His problems here recently, fastball location, and he's got to prove he can command the fastball. Why not prove it inside? Get this offense off their feet. Get them moving a little bit. Try to open up that outside edge and limit this team. They've scored 107 first inning runs. You better stop them early. I was interested talking to the Red Sox players before the game tonight. They said they went into last night's game knowing there were going to be strikes thrown, so they went in to be aggressive which is exactly what they did from the very first pitch to Dustin Pedroia, and they stayed that way all night. Expect the same against Bundy? Well, I, I think Dylan Bundy's been a little off lately. They may just wait him out and see what he's got. The last time Dylan Bundy faced the Red Sox, yeah, they were aggressive on him. They got him for a couple home runs. So uh, Dylan's going to have to be careful. He's seen this Red Sox offense go. Like I said, he's got to be aggressive inside, make them feel uncomfortable so that he can open up that outside edge. And let's hope for as uh, Oriole fans that he has fastball command. If not, it could be a very short outing for Bundy. All right, we'll see what happens here tonight. Uh, we're going to talk a little hitting. Scott Cooper takes care of that for the Orioles. He'll be back to join us. Lefty righty matchups in just a minute.
Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Transparency Low Fares, nothing to hide. And by Visit Annapolis.org. Create your moment at Visit Annapolis.org. Scott Gulba is the hitting coach of the Orioles in his second season as such. We've talked about reverse and neutral numbers this year, meaning pitchers who generally would have a better time against righties or lefties aren't. Kevin Gosman, for instance, left handers, lower than righties. Chris Tillman, right hander, left handers, lower than righties. Dylan Bundy, right hander, left handers, lower than righties. Those are reverse numbers from what historically we think of. Scott Cool by the hitting coach. How come? With the lefties this year, especially, um, you know, they're pitching in more frequently. A lot of them have, have developed a cutter, which is uh, gets in on right-handed batters and it speeds them up and consequently gets them off that changeup and and breaking ball away. Um, you kind of saw that last night in David Price. It's you got to respect the fastball being 94-95 and. When he cuts it in and then throws that nice changeup away that has some late diving action, it's tough to cover both sides of the plate. So I think that's one of the things that the hitters have had to deal with this year. And, and I think that uh, most of the left-hand hitters, I feel like, have moved towards the third base side, which has gotten closer to the right-hand hitters. Um, it's consequently, same thing with the righties. I think they've gotten towards the first base side. And the lefties, they're throwing in, and then they got the, you know, some of them got that good changeup. Um, and so uh, consequently there's been a reverse split this year. So what's the adjustment for batters? Well I think it's a, it's you know it's a matter of picking a side of the plate that you feel comfortable with and understanding that you know where the strike zone is and uh, for us we've really struggled at that this year because I, I feel like you know we've tried to cover too much of the plate and um, swung some pitches in off the plate some pitches out of the zone. And that's kind of our M.O., but in general, it's gotten uh, a little bit worse against the lefties because we're a right-handed dominant team. Are these, you remember the screwball days when the, they used to be a pitch actually called a screwball. We don't really call it that anymore. But is that the effect that we're seeing on some of these pitches? Well, I, I just think that they have the ability now that the angle is is not as severe and, and it's, it's harder to pick up because it's closer to the hitter. And so consequently, it does speed you up and it gives them more plate to work with on the arm side. So... Um, it's something of the adjustment that I think that all teams are going through, I, I, especially for us. And, you know, you got to tip your hat, too, because some of the lefties we're facing are pretty darn good. good. You know, Jay Hopps having a tremendous year. David Price, obviously, he is who he is. You know, and, and in the past, guys like Drew Smiley and them had, had really good years. So, um, you know, you got to tip your hat, too, to some of the lefties that we've been facing. And another one tonight on the mound. Our BGE home game time temperature. Beautiful light, 77 degrees. BGE Home, Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? Left-hander, Drew Pomerantz, ready to go. And Jones will take the pitch outside. Orioles lineup brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. Jones, Scope, Machado, Trump, Davis, and Weeders. Hardy, Stubbs, back in again. And Reimold in left field. Adam will take the pitch, and that'll be there for a strike to him. One ball, one strike. Take a look at Drew Pomerantz's pitch arsenal this year. The fastball 52%, low 90s with the heater, and the big breaking ball. You just saw it drop in there for a strike one to Adam Jones, his two primary pitches. The rest of the numbers here 3.01 earned run average, 10 wins. Uh, really pitched well with San Diego before the trade. Of course, the win loss record not too good, but they're the splits Coolball was talking about. Right handers just 202. Off Pomerantz and lefties at 233. Adam Jones with a one ball two strike count and will take the pitch away. Do not be deceived by Pomerantz's record at 10 and 11. He's pitched 158 innings, given up only 122 hits. His ERA for the year is 3.01. If he qualified in the American League, he would be second in earned run average in the American League. 2 2 delivery on the way, and he just blew heat by him. Well, extra life with that fastball at the top of the zone, and this is really what's helped Pomerantz go. And early on in a ball game, this is how he is going to attack. He'll show that big curveball, but the heater at the top of the zone where he gets a lot of swing and misses and pop outs, early outs up in the zone. That are the uh, Orioles offense. Their game plan has got to be work Pomerantz, try to get him to throw as many pitches as possible because he loses that velocity as the game goes on. Pitch will be taken for a strike. Jonathan Scope 
some audio difficulties. We understand. We apologize. Getting those corrected for you. Scope had an 0 for 3 in the ball game last night. Pomerantz is 0 for 1 lifetime against the Orioles. Ground ball will go to third. Big hop played by Shaw. Two down. Let's take a look at the Red Sox defense behind Drew Pomerantz tonight here at Fenway Park. Young Bradley Jr. and Betts in the Sox outfield. Bogarts and Pedroia turning two up the middle. Shaw in the start at third base. Ramirez over at first. And Hannigan in catching tonight. So two outs here. And here's Manny Machado. Manny with a home run last night. The Orioles only had two hits. Both of them were home runs. They'd never had an at bat with a runner in scoring position in the ball game last night. That just doesn't happen, but that's what David Price did to them, the starting pitcher. So Manny won for four, the homer. He and Chris Davis. Pitch taken away. Here's a look at Manny Machado's home run. A 315 average, three home runs, eight RBI this season against the Red Sox. That home run last night, a bomb. Lawrence will look for the outside corner, does not get the call there. Manny with a 2 0 count, 35 home runs, 91 RBIs for Manny Machado, along with a 306 average, 10th in the league in average starting the day. Pomerantz gets it in, fouled away. Manny has moved up in the home run race. He is now seven, looking to break into the top 10 in RBIs, only a couple out of the top 10. And he carries the best road batting average for the Orioles this season on the road hitting 306 which is the sixth highest average on the road in the American League. Manny's going to add to that. No line drive right at Bradley. A one two three inning the left hander Pomerantz gets it done for the Orioles. It'll be the right hander 23 year old Dylan Bundy. Coming up. Keep your hand right there. Don't move. Thank you very much. All right, let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Red Sox. Pedroia, Bogarts, and Ortiz. Betts, Ramirez, and Shaw. Young Bradley and Hannigan will be doing the work behind the plate for David Ortiz. Now tied with Mickey in the home run department. Let's take a look at Dylan Bundy's pitch arsenal here. The fastball 61% of the time. His fastball has stayed true. I'll tell you, there was some concern about his fastball velocity, but his last outing. He had the velocity 94 95 power curve super change up as well. Whole key for Dylan Bundy the command of all of his pitches 3 8 2 earned run average 92 punch outs for Bundy in 94 and a third innings of work. When it's hitting 259 overall off Dylan Bundy see the lefties at 245 right he's 276 giving up the 15 long balls. Dustin Pedroia went after the first pitch last night and kicked off the big first inning. He's taking this time all the way. Red Sox got five runs, six hits in the first inning of the ball game. Pedroia and most of the rest of the lineup came out at the end of the game. He's got a six-game hit streak, two for four in the ball game last night. 
And he'll lace that one to the gap. Starts it out again. That's going to take a hop off the wall. Adam Jones has it. Throw into second base. Not in time. Pedroia's got a double. It took two pitches to make. Kidding me with this guy right now? He is seriously on fire here at Fenway Park. 23 for 34 now here at Fenway. Great swing jumping on the second pitch. Look at these first things first. Nationals leading the way with first inning runs. There are the Red Sox 107 first inning runs. Of course, they scored five in last night's ball game. Went in to score in the first seven innings of the game, but you have to shut them down in the first inning if you want a shot. Bogart's up. He had a two for five in the ball game last night. The Red Sox were five for 11 with runners in scoring position in last night's game. Bogarts will take a breaking ball that fooled him. That is in there for a strike. Bogarts has hit 291 against the Orioles, very close to his overall 300 average. He has driven in 10 runs against the Orioles this year without hitting a home run against the O's. Bundy's got a very solid number you saw there with runners in scoring position. Runner will stay big hop to Hardy and gets the out with Pedroia staying at second base. Take a look at the O's defense behind Dylan Bundy. Rymole getting started in left field. Jones and Stubbs will join him. Hardy and Scope up the middle. Machado and Davis once again on the corners. And Matt Weeders behind the plate. David Ortiz, the DH coming up. Home run in the ball game last night, tying him with Mickey Mantle on the all time home run list. As in his final year, he continues to move up a lot of those lists. Mike Schmidt is next, 548. Ortiz and Mantle tied for 17th, 536. And Ortiz with the runner at second, Pedroia. Shift on, so Hardy's holding the runner. Ortiz will take it for a strike in turn. Chris Guccione, the home plate umpire. And Stayer, actually, in the chat briefly. There you go. For Dylan Bundy against Boston, his record is 0 1. Four games, one start this year. His ERA is over six in five career games against the Red Sox. Ortiz takes that one away. Here at Fenway, Bundy has no record. He's pitched three ball games here. But only four innings and an ERA 2.25 here at Fenway Park. One ball, one strike count. Pedroia watching Hardy is holding him tight. Ortiz going for the long ball, the big cut on that one. 96 on the heater. That is a great fastball right there from Dylan Bundy. Bundy, uh, one of the best. This rotation, four runs allowed in the first inning in his 11 starts this year. Nice no, low number. Monday starting to work that fastball, move it around a little two seamer for the first pitch. 96 away, then 96 under the hands for strike two. And Ortiz down to first base. That is a fair ball. Davis gets it behind the bag. Pedroia will move up, but now there are two down. A couple of big outs on Bogarts and Ortiz. For Dylan Bundy. Yeah, so, uh, very important outs there. All made on good fastballs inside. Bogart's pulling inside fastball to JJ Hardy for the first out. A couple good heaters in at 96 to get Ortiz. That'll bring up Mookie Betts. The Oriole destroyer this year hitting 418, eight home runs against the Orioles and 19 RBIs against the Orioles. He had two last night. Runner on to third base takes the strike. And there are two down. Ortiz is fifth in the league with runners in scoring position, and Betts is sixth in average. Betts hitting 361, Ortiz 363 in these situations for the Red Sox. Bundy with the 0 1 delivery and reach for. And a two strike count. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We were talking about that run differential uh, at the open of this ball game, and this Red Sox offense, runners in scoring position, uh, they're just getting better. It seems over the last month, 322 with runners in scoring position. Uh, they have just been a machine. They're number one at 290 overall in the year. They go up a little bit, 96 miles an hour. Last two pitches, just able to get the bat around. 
Mookie Betts to foul those pitches off. Betts leads the majors in total bases and in multi hit games. He is third in runs in the American League, second in hits, seventh in average. 0 2. Bundy chance to get out of this, leave a runner at third. And that's down to third, backhanded Manny Machado. That was hit hard. And gets the out. Boy, Manny had to play that one in a hurry. That's a typical play at third base. It's not about range, it's about reaction. And that's what Manny had to do right there. The runner left on after one no score. Partner, visit locations and why wait in the ER.com brings us the numbers. Now, the numbers uh, change quite dramatically uh, in one game. And then, uh, of course, the Orioles and the Red Sox tied up 6 6, but uh, the runs per game jumped up after Boston exploded 4 11 in last night's contest. Now, up to six runs per ball game. How about the batting average? 3 04 versus the O's. That's why Dylan Bundy has got to get the ball in. Jam some of these hitters. Look, Showalter hoping for some depth out of the starters. John Farrell looking to chase and get that offense running again. The Red Sox are averaging 7.8 runs a game in September. And the pitch on the way will be taken for a strike by Trumbo. Marks in the DH roll 0 for 3 in the ball game last night. All of a sudden, his lead for the major league lead. In home runs is being challenged. It'll be fouled away. And the not the usual suspects, as they say. Right now, one behind him is Brian Dozier of the Twins. Trumbo's got 41, Dozier's got 40. Encarnacion's got 39, and the Orioles Chris Davis with 37. Dozier's the one who's been tagging it of late. Nasty pitch down and in, and an 0-2 count. Real good breaking ball. That's the big curve. Pretty sharp bite at the end. Little, uh, cutter that he throws as well. Breaking ball is the key to his success against the right handers. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way. Trumbo reaches and gets a base hit. So the Orioles get their first hit of the ball game, and it is a leadoff single here in the second inning. Our Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, James McElwain from Bel Air, 500 for being selected, 500 more for every Orioles home run hit. Grab a home run riches scratch off before they're going, going, gone. You could win up to 50,000. Visit mdlottery.com slash baseball. Like James, Orioles continuing to lead the majors in home runs. And one of the reasons Chris Davis. Davis with a home run in the ball game last night off David Price, one for three. Shift on double play depth. And the pitch up and away. Well, we showed Manny. Now, how about Davis? This was the Orioles' offense in yesterday's ball game. They've both been doing damage all year long against the Sox. Davis, three home runs and nine RBI in Boston this season. 
Amaranth will look over left handers delivery. The Orioles with a loss with Price starting have now moved to 500 against left handed starters. They are 20 and 20. The number against left handers overall batting average of 230 is now 29th in the majors. Dodgers have the lower number. 230 against lefties, 269 off right handers. Davis takes the pitch inside, close around the knees that time, 3 0. Make the hitter a little bit uncomfortable here. Take a look at the home run leaders in the American League. Trumbo on top, as you mentioned, and Dozier sneaking in behind, and Carnacion right there, 39, and there's the crusher at 37. 3 0 count. Runner off first. Davis takes it, is there for a strike. Pomerantz was supposed to start last night, got changed up over the weekend as John Farrell decided to give him an extra day's rest. Carl Willis, pitching coach, agreed. So, Pomerantz tonight, price moved up to yesterday. Gives Pomerantz an extra day, and there's another reason. Swing and a miss on that one. If game 162, Red Sox and Toronto matters, David Price will pitch. By moving him around, it sets him up for that final game. Should it be a meaningful game, last game of the year? Winning last night, he's 16 and 8. You got that right. But uh, I also think they're really trying to be careful with Pom Pomerantz here down the stretch. This is an uncharted territory, much like Dylan Bundy. Of course, innings pitched. Yeah, he's got a career high going in the uh, innings department. Yeah. Take a look at some stingy starters. Highest percentage of starts allowing two runs or fewer. And there is Drew Pomerantz. This with San Diego and Boston. 70.4% of his starts, two runs or fewer. He's on a nice run right now with the Red Sox. His last seven starts, 276. It's been three runs or less, but uh, been pitching pretty well since coming over to the Sox. Three ball, two strike count. And Davis will draw the walk. So the first walk surrendered by Pomerantz, and the Orioles get two on to start the second inning. Nobody out. And that will bring Dustin Pedroia in. Have a word with the Pomerantz. Matt's had a good bat going on this road trip. I'd like to continue it here. Switch hitter for the Orioles. Turning around and against. The left handers this year only 188. Two of his 14 home runs hit this way. Much better from the other side, both average and power. Two on, nobody out infield set for two. Leaders will take the pitch up and away for a ball. Pomerantz has thrown 159 and two thirds innings this year combined. That is a new high for him. And they've been pressure innings. They've been situations where the Red Sox have not scored. The Sox have scored 18 runs in seven games for Pomerantz. That's why the record's not any better. 1 0 delivery, and that's there with the 93 for a strike. Yeah, but uh, Pomerantz, most innings he's logged uh, 96 and two thirds back in 2012 when he had uh, made 22 starts. San Diego and um, this year just shattering that innings mark. Yeah. One ball, one strike count. That was Buck Showaller was saying the other day. He says we talk about all these numbers, innings pitch. You don't want to go more than 30 innings more than what a career high has been. Buck says there's no evidence to support that. He says we're making this up out of loincloth. So there've been no studies done. There's no look at pitchers who go above that or below that or what happens to them when they do it's just kind of been thrown out there and now sounds like the word from the gospel of baseball but there's no support for that two ball one strike delivery on the way and that will be foul back leaders with a two ball two strike count it's so tough to lay off that high fastball Pomerantz looks good it stays true at the top of the zone leaders Frustrated, he swung at that pitch. He's on pitch track, working the top of the zone on Waiters. Pomerantz with 174 strikeouts in 158 innings. It's really good. And uh, 62 walks now surrendered. Two ball, two strike count. 
Ground ball towards the hole. They're playing him the other way. Got to go to third. Nice play. What a heads up play for Bogarts because there was no other place to go. So he'll get the force out on Trumbo the lead runner. Yeah, really nice play there by Bogarts. Really come a long way defensively. Still a very young player, but has learned so much. Ball taking him to the hole. Play right in front of him. And thinking about this play all the way to the baseball. Realizes he doesn't have a shot at turning two or even cutting it back across the field to get the lead out at second base. He's going to make the easy feed to Shaw at third. Nice play by Shaw getting back to third base. And the Orioles still have two on, only one away. And J.J. Hardy comes to the plate. Hardy's done a real good job of getting folks home. He hit 263 with runners in scoring position last year. He is up that number to 292. This year. That's a lot to do with the fact he's been healthy for the entire, virtually the entire season. Hardy with an 0 for 2 in the ball game last night. Davis now at second base. Weeders on at first. 1 0 delivery on the way, and Hardy upstairs on one. Drew Pomerantz up on an average by pitch type. The fastball, hard time getting to it. A lot of swing throughs at the top of the zone, just 208. Big nasty curveball, just 220. It's a change, 128. Doesn't throw it a lot. Not really the fastball curve, but very good numbers. One ball, one strike delivery on the way. JJ will take it outside. Among the major league leaders with that 210 opponent batting average, Pomerantz is fourth in the majors, fourth lowest. We talked about that strikeout rate. Among major league pitchers, that is the ninth highest in strikeouts per nine innings. That ERA in the majors is 12th. But because he's divided between the two leagues, it doesn't show up in the American League in the rankings. 2 1 delivery on the way, and a strike called on the inside corner. And Hardy, who rarely complains, turns. And it doesn't say anything. 2 and 2. Just his body action, you could kind of tell. <laughs> and I think the umpire got the message as well. If he's looking over in the Orioles dugout, he'll get the message too. But Walter burning a hole through him with the eyes. Major League Baseball, what, two months ago, started fining teams, managers for chirping at umpires from the dugout. It worked. You don't see much said anymore at all from the dugouts by players or coaches. 2 2 delivery, nice stop made. Did he go? No. David Rackley down at first base. So Hardy works the count full. You know, the hard breaking ball. Hannigan, of course, running out there for the quick visit after getting that down and in fastball. Had to bury the slider down in there as well. Almost got Hardy to bite. Hannigan trying to sell it. Three balls, two strikes, one away. Orioles trying to get on the board here in the second inning. Davis the walk at second. Weeders field his choice at first. Hardy laces one. Way back by the Green Monster. And goodbye home run. Only the sign kept it in the yard. One of J.J.'s longest home runs of the season. Good for three. And the Orioles take a 3 nothing lead. J.J. Hardy after he missed that first high fastball made an adjustment. Assumed that he was going to come back up there and he got on top of this one. Ninth home run of the year. He was getting on the board first with a big crooked number. Boy what a big shot early. Coming on that 3 2 count. 19th home run surrendered by Pomerantz. 17 of them by right handers in for a strike. Here's a look at the high heater and J.J. Hardy punishing this baseball. What a swing. It's going to stay short to the high heater. Hardy does there. That was headed for Lansdowne Street, but for the big billboard signs out there. He really rocketed that one 398 feet. And the Orioles get a huge home run and a lead here in the second inning. Drew Stubbs getting the start again in right field 0 for 3 in the ball game last night. One ball two strike count. 
And that will be taken up and in. Evens the count up, two balls, two strikes. For Hardy, that is his third home run against the Red Sox this year. He now has eight RBIs against Boston. And it's the seventh home run of his career here in this ballpark. And uh, JJ. Don't know he's hit a ball harder than that this year or not. Yeah, good swing from Hardy and uh, nice for him to regroup the troops after the tough strike call. Mm -hmm. That will be taken and an unhappy Pomerantz. That's the second walk he surrendered in the inning. One has already scored. The stubs on, still only one away. Seeing how upset his pitcher is, Hannigan heads out to the mound. MO anyway. We might be out there about 20 more times in this ball game. He wants to go out and uh, say a few words to a starting pitcher. Take a look at Pomerantz's uh, ratio. A lot of balls. We start this ball game. Eight pitches thrown. Nolan Rymold getting the start in left field. Rymold had an 0 for 1 coming in late in the ball game last night. One away. Steve Pierce who started last night that forearm elbow has acted up really hurts. Uh, he could hardly do anything with the arm today so he's out. He's going to get a second opinion on a doctor in New York and a decision on what they're going to do but don't be surprised if that's it for Steve Pierce this year. Pitch on the way to him. Pomerantz up with a lot of pitches here in the early part of this ball game. Yeah Orioles really making them work. Uh, Pomerantz kind of shaking that arm out a little bit. That's what he always does, but uh, seems a little uncomfortable out there. This Orioles offense giving him the shakes, but uh, Orioles had to be their game plan. Make him work, make him throw a lot of pitches. It's up around 80, 90 pitches. Fastball velocity really comes down. 1 0 delivery on the way, and that one's going to be up and in. And he's just not there, and the Orioles taking advantage of it. In mind what the Orioles are doing here against Pomerantz. He has denoted those runs three or fewer each of the last seven. The Orioles already have put a three run spot up on the board here in the second inning. Pitch on the way taken. It'll be in there for a strike. Rymel not going after anything until Pomerantz showed he could throw a strike. Yeah, Pomerantz uh, able to can't command the fastball here in the early part of the Ball game. And then calling the breaking ball. Have him finish out in front and get a better feel for that heater. Stubbs off first base. There he goes. Rymold half a swing. Throw down and stole the base. How many times have we not said that <laughs> for the Orioles this year as they pick up their 17th stolen base? Yeah, not a lot of attempts here by the Orioles, but Stubbs brought in because of the speed. The opportunities to steal some bases for the Orioles. Pedroia with a quick slap tag. And again, a pretty good pitch to handle right there. Looks like Stubbs got in there just in time. So he's one for one as an Orioles stealing, five for five on the year. And the Orioles get another runner in scoring position, takes away the possible ground ball double play. Pedroia holding the runner tight. Pitch to Rymold. It will be taken down low. So count again goes uh, full as Pomerantz continues to struggle and throw a lot of pitches early in the ball game. Embry's already up. They don't like what they see. Three ball, two strike count, one away. That one is drilled. That's way back in left field at the wall. That is gone. Goodbye, home run. Nolan Rymel just enough to get it over the monster. His sixth of the year. RBIs 14 and 15. And how about a reversal in games from last night to tonight? I mean, this Orioles offense can explode as well. Five runs here in the second inning. A couple home runs for the O's. Nolan jumping on a one breaking ball. Just enough on a line drive ball was hit hard and headed up to the Green Monster. Pitching coach Carl Willis on his way up. 
it is. Just staying in the middle of the plate. Getting himself in a good position. Great patience for that breaking ball. And that's a fine drive. Just getting up over the green monster. Well, Wade Miley worked an inning in the third, gave up six runs on eight hits for the Orioles last night. And now Bomberance, a 27 year old left hander, struggling here, has given up five runs on three hits, two home runs, all in the second inning. Bullpen may not be ready yet, so Willis drawing some time. And the Orioles are going to go back to the top of the order and Adam Jones. That couple walks, good patience, waiting out the mistakes and taking advantage of the mistakes. Orioles three games behind Boston in the standings. They are up a game in the wild card. And that's a strike on the outside corner. Adam, a strikeout victim, is first time up. There are the wild card standings. How about Seattle's back in it? Thought they had drifted away. A swing and a miss and a pitch probably up. And the count goes to him too. Ball just takes off up at the top of the zone. And the crowd buzzing here. They were last night, but for a different reason. 0 2. Jones on a bouncer that hits out in front of the plate. Still only one down. Hardy, the three run homer is ninth. Rymold taking advantage of another walk in front of him. Both walks in the inning of score. Palmer at center is the one two pitch. And uh, Jones late on it. Second strikeout. Both have come against Adam. Two down. Like maybe a little cutter here stays at the top of the zone. I mean, it's a mistake. And I'm just missing this one. Just dropping the bat head a little bit. Looks look like a uh, pumpkin coming in there. He's got big for the third home run of the inning. Jonathan Scope grounded out his first time up. Tailing pitch down and away. Jonathan hitting uh, even 200 against the Red Sox this year. A couple of home runs, five RBIs, well below his season average of 271. After away comes up and in. One ball, one strike count. Good day for Darren O'Day. Simulated game all went well. He's going to throw another simulated game on Thursday. Orioles hope he's back either Sunday or Monday ready to pitch. That one is drilled but foul. It's in the sweet spot. That would have left the park except for the sign. Would have been foul, but it would have been out of the yard. That hit that sign right up there, the yeah. very top of the stands. It broke some lights. <laughs> he would have enjoyed it if it had been fair. Yeah. Bomber answer one two delivery on the way. Check it first. No. Red Sox have the 7 6 lead in the season series. Orioles have still won four out of the seven that have been played here at Fenway this year. Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way. And again, Jonathan Scope keeps the at bat alive. Really making him labor through this inning. Not letting up one bit. 43 pitches to this point. Man, man. It's about three innings worth. Scope and a bouncer out in front. John Farrell's just hoping he can finish the inning and then he's in all likelihood gone. Embry's ready in the bullpen if they need him. Three ball, two strikeout. Jonathan Scope. Eighth Oriole to hit here in the second inning. Full count delivery and Scope to chase one away. 
So Pomerantz will get a strikeout, but it's the Orioles who get the runs. Using the long ball again, J.J. Hardy two on in front of him. This one would be number nine. Three nothing lead, a walk, Rymel. Long ball, and the Orioles have a five nothing advantage. Baseball brought to you by T-Mobile takes us to our notebook and our East Winds page. How about the Blue Jays? They lost seven out of ten this month, eighteen and nine last September when they won the title. CC Sabat is going tonight. Yankee Stadium this season, six and four, three three on the road, two and eight, five two eight at home. Tonight the Dodgers are there. D.D. Gregorius in a slump, three thirty four in nine games this month. He set yesterday, and Torres, who's been playing third, actually played short. He has had the hot bat for the Yankees. Every day, new stories, every day, new standings. <laughs> you really got to check them. In New York's now five games out of the division race, so their chance for the Yankees now lies in the wild card. They are two behind for a wild card spot. Dylan Bundy against Ramirez. Two for three, a home run, three RBIs in the ball game last night. Ramirez has got a seven-game hit streak coming into this game. Shaw and Young to follow. 0-2 delivery. He'll take the pitch away. Bundy can uh, really put an exclamation point on this second inning. A big shutdown here. Put together an inning like he had in the first. Ramirez carrying the hot bat. Four home runs last five games. During his seven game hit streak, he's hit four of them. And a foul tip into the mitt, and Bundy will get the strikeout. Now Bundy carrying a good fastball here early in this ball game. Mid 90s with everything. Get the fastball at the top of the zone, and it is tough to get on top. Great rotation, pulling down through the four seam heater. Here as Badhead drops just a little bit. Nice job by Weeders hanging on. Travis Shaw shift on against him. 0 for 1 last night coming in late. Bundy against the Red Sox back uh, on the 17th of August had a start. 8 1 loss by the Orioles. He gave up five runs, nine hits, four in the third innings. It broke a three game win streak that Dylan had at that time. So, uh, Looking for a little equalizer here at Fenway tonight. One ball, one strike count. Dave Wallace. That'll go to first over the head of Davis and roll into the corner. Shaw will make the turn. He'll head to second base and go in quietly with a stand up double with one down here in the second inning. Second hit for Boston. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to more time later in our ball game brought to you by Miller. Right. Down the line for Shaw. 
Red Sox two doubles in the game. Saw 33 doubles. That's mm. Red Sox team can hit some doubles, can't they? They're looking for Goodness. a mark in that department yeah. on the year. Here is Young, five game hit streak. It's Young. They'll take the pitch inside. Young against the Orioles, 385 this year. He's had three home runs and four RBIs against the Orioles. And in the dirt, good stop made. Andrew Benedendi is back off the DL today. The 22 year old youngster got off to that great start, disabled August 25 with a left knee sprain. Raise that because some of the time being taken by Young now that might have gone to Benedetti if Young was not playing so well. John Farrell's got a couple of options, and for now, it's Young. John was saying yesterday, he also he said, I got to think about the experience. Benedetti's a rookie, a youngster just coming up. I've got a hot hitter who's a veteran in the outfield and young said Benedetti's going to help us but right now I'm liking young. Oh yeah absolutely I mean down the stretch you love the young talent that this Red Sox team has but if you've got veteran guys that have been through it put them in the lineup. Not what Bundy wanted there. Does set up a possible double play with one away but puts two on for Jackie Bradley Jr. Even with the speed he has, he's hit into 10 double plays, which uh, kind of surprises me a little high from this side of the plate. Yeah. Two on and one down. 0 for 3 in the ball game last night. And we'll take the pitch for a strike. Bradley's hit only 222 against the Orioles this year, but he has picked up 10 RBIs against the O's. These two teams have just gone offensively against one another all season long. Oh one pitch on the way and that'll be inside. There you see the numbers already. We're only in the bottom of the second inning. Sean Young get their lead second and first. Off speed. That tied him up. That's Big stride call. huh? Good breaking ball there from Dylan Bundy. Spin it well. All three pitches plus right now for Bundy. He helps the ability to locate that 96 mile an hour heater as he's doing in this ball game. Cal will say it a ball and two strikes. Some pretty good facial expressions out of Dylan Bundy during a game. One ball, two strike count. Bradley Jr. waiting on it, and that's going to be a base hit to center field. Shaw will make a turn. He'll be held by Butterfield. Good throw by Adam Jones to the cutoff man, and the bases are loaded. One away. Ball hit so hard, Shaw had no chance to score. Pretty impressive swing here. High fastball. So right back through the box. Shaw not too fleet of foot. Butterfield hand up right away. Good job by Adam Jones at the cutoff man. The pitch. Yeah. This has been a bases loaded two games so far. The Red Sox had three occasions last night where they had the sacks full. So Hannigan up, trying to get him back in the game. The Orioles have the five-nothing lead. Single, double, and a walk, loading him up for Boston. Delivery to Hannigan makes it outside for the ball. Points at the bases loaded there, two for six off Dylan Bundy by pitch. Boy, Hannigan's gone three for eight with the sacks full. 
1 0 delivery on the way, and he went after that one, I do believe. No! David Rackley, the call. Man, take a look at this high fastball. Boy, the body went, but the he bat head stayed day. back. Yeah, he yeah. did. Yep. He kept the bat back. David Rackley, you had it right. 2 0 delivery on the way, and uh, he went on that one. Knew what he was going to get. Lined up a fastball, or tried to, 2 and 1. Yeah, Bundy getting back into the count with 95. A big early at bat in this game with the Orioles getting those five runs in the last half inning. Bundy trying to get out of it here, not surrender any back. Two on delivery on the way, and Hadigan will fight it off. Numbers pretty impressive by Hannigan uh, in his career. 92 does have one grand slam under his belt. It's better in this situation than any other, <laughs> even though they're limited in number. Two balls, two strikes, one down. Shaw, Young, and Bradley, the base runners. Hannigan takes it. And we've had a few of these on both sides of the diamond already. Three two counts. Boy, is this an important pitch. One down, three two delivery. Hannigan takes and the base is loaded well. And the Red Sox get on the board five to one. Line pitch right there from Dylan Bundy. Fastball across the knees. The umpire has it a little bit low, but on the pitch track, like he catches the bottom of the box. Gone either way right there. The lineup turns over. So Hannigan picks up the RBI. A pretty patient at bat. Risky one, but patient. 14 RBIs for him now Dustin Pedroia. Bases remain loaded one away. Pedroia will take the pitch up and in. That will send Weeders out. A little cross up right there on the signs. Change up. Weeders came right out of the chute. Make sure they're on the same page here. Bank of America alert. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, since August 10th. Now that's right around the time he moved it into that leadoff batter spot. 452. Batting average since then. He has been red hot. Three for ten with the bases loaded. One grand slam this year. Pedroia will take the pitch inside. And Bundy goes 2-0 oh on Pedroia. He's done his usual against the Orioles, hitting uh, 351 this year with a home run, a couple of RBIs. 5 1, Orioles up, looking for a ground ball double play right here. Pedroia takes it outside. 3 and 0. Oh. What man, what happened? Looks so sharp and crisp. The first inning, the strikeout on Ramirez and uh, Lost the field in the second inning. The Droya double his first time up. 3 0 deliveries taking all the way and he walked him. Oh! Back to back bases loaded walks. And it is a 5 2 game and Dave Wallace on his way up. Bundy three walks in this inning. It's plagued him here recently. Command issues. The command here in the second inning. Thirty-eight pitches thrown, seventeen balls. Dory gets his sixty-sixth, six-six RBI. Now the Orioles bullpen will start moving about. Thank you. 
So the bases remain loaded. With one down, a double by Shaw, Hunter up, a walk, Young, Bradley a single, a walk, Hannigan, bases loaded, a walk, Pedroia with the bases loaded. Two runs in and only one hit. Xander Bogarts, and that is in there for a strike. So again, a ground ball away from getting out of it. Find the find the strike zone. Bogarts this year, three for 13 with the bases loaded. The one delivery to him, way out in front, good pitch. Looking fastball, didn't get it. Yeah, he's shown uh, just a handful of change-ups here, but a nasty one. He's at hard, 88 miles an hour. Actually, fortunate that one Ooh, in the bat head as it leaked back into the inner third. Bogarts two strike count. Stepped up in the box and fouls it off. That was interesting. Talk about an adjustment being made. He was looking for another off speed pitch. Yeah. He moved way up to right the up front there. of the box. That front foot was almost out. So he guessed pitch and adjusted and actually got one. Wow. That's pretty dangerous. Yeah, it is. Bogarts with the 0 2. Hangs in with a two strike count. And Bundy is working hard here in this inning. We're coming into the night. Six forced in this double plays, 62 opportunities. Bundy's inning looking a lot like Pomerantz's. Starters have really had problems here in two innings. 0-2 delivery on the way. Bogarts down the line. It is foul. Man. 0-2. A little uh, tentative about bouncing the breaking ball there. But you certainly don't want to hang it. Bogarts just a little quick on the curve. Red Sox with the sacks full here in the second inning. One down again. And he gets him. Big strikeout. Number two in the ballgame for Bundy. And that sets the stage for a moment. And a good change up here. This job working it down and in. Works itself off of the plate. Strike three. So David Ortiz will stand in with the bases loaded. 0 for 6 with the bases loaded this year. 11 Grand Slams lifetime. Goes after the first pitch. Davis has got it. Takes it to the bag and they get the out. Couple of runs score on bases loaded walks. Eight Red Sox came to the plate. 5 2 Orioles.
at Camden Yards next week. Orioles Red Sox and a four game series that'll start Monday. Good seats remain for it. Paint the park orange. The drive for the postseason. Get your tickets at Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. Two runs on two hits and the bases left loaded in the second inning. The Orioles have the 5-2 lead each team with only three hits. But Pomerantz has walked a couple. Bundy has walked three. Manny Machado will lead it off. As Pomerantz will stay out on the mound to start it after eight Orioles came to the plate in the second inning. Machado flied out the center his first time up. Manny will take the pitch up high for a ball. The Red Sox. Pomerantz on the mound hoping the lefty and to give them a couple of decent starts the rest of the way same thing the Orioles hope regarding Bundy. A couple of pitches they're relying on but with some trepidation. Yeah. Yeah just the innings. Uh, a little worried here down the stretch. That one will be bounced. And a two ball one strike count. It has to be a very short tether right now on Pomerantz. As he comes out here in the third inning. Surprised he made it through that second. Yeah, I am too. Chato with one up will foul it away down the line. And near the tie. No. That one was almost behind it. Good play though. Ramirez stayed with it. Our league leaderboard brought to you by Coons.com. Over two million vehicles sold and counting. How about doubles uh, American League leaders? There's David Ortiz with 45. Mookie Betts, 40 doubles, and Manny Machado right behind the two Red Sox. 39 for Machado. Machado making a big push. American League MVP. 2 2 delivery on the way. Fooled on the pitch, but didn't go after it. So another 3 2 count. 61 pitches thrown by Drew Pomerantz. Left handers full count delivery will be rattled foul. This one does clear the stadium. Gee, we have had we have had some shots. Yeah. Hardy's would have gone out of the ballpark but hit the sign. Foul ball down the line that would have gone out, hit the Coke sign down there. That one missed it all. He'll take that though. Sharp line drive to left field for a base hit. Manny Machado is on leadoff single here in the third inning. And that's going to be it for Pomerantz. The leash indeed was short. So if Pomerantz can't get it done, he will go two plus innings in the game. And a strange line. He gave up only uh, four hits, but so far charged with five runs. And responsible for the runner on base. So the Orioles will try and tack on some more here in the third against the pin.
nice little roll for the Red Sox. It's shut down by the Orioles offense only lasting uh, the two innings. Four hits five earned runs on the board Orioles offense was on their game worked them for a couple walks forced them to throw a lot of pitches. And he is gone now it's time for the Jiffy Lube pitching change brought to you by Jiffy Lube where participating stores now do brake services. Stop in and let Jiffy Lube inspect your brakes today. Well Heath Embry coming out of the Red Sox bullpen with a good fastball low to mid 90s with the heater That's a curve and the change occasional change the lefties will see. In uh, 33 games, this is only his second appearance here in September. Four wins with a 2.74 earned run average. Opponents hitting 2.61. Righties, tough time with that uh, slider, 2.05, but the lefties way up to 3.59. 27 year old veteran. Up and down with the Red Sox this year. And the pitch will be taken for a ball. Mike Trumbo at the plate for Embry. He threw the fourth inning Sunday's game against Toronto. A couple of strikeouts didn't give anything up. We talked about the reverse numbers. Well, these are the numbers that are, if you will, by the book. The left handers way up there, as Mike showed you. That ball to the middle. Bogart's trouble. Got it to Pedroia. Quick release. And they get the double play. This infield has given uh, everybody. Some testy hops. Here, Bogarts has to go down to both knees to corral this ground ball. Somehow gets it to Pedroia, and Pedroia does the rest. A pretty impressive double play turned here on Trumbo. Pedroia been doing it for a long time. Cleans it up. So it takes the leadoff single by Manny Machado off. Good play. Now the infield will shift. Chris Davis drew a walk and scored. Embry's first appearance against the Orioles this year. Lifetime, he's appeared in relief in four games. The Orioles have touched him up for eight runs on nine hits in four and two thirds innings in other years for Embry. So the line written uh, for Pomerantz, that's going to be five runs, four hits, two plus, two home runs. Couple of walks and three strikeouts. And Chris with a big wind up on that one fouls it back. One ball, two strike count. Red Sox this year, their bullpen is seventh in ERA, the Orioles sixth. The similarities between the two bullpens. John Farrell believing he's improved his bullpen a good deal by getting Koji O'Hara back. Changes the roles that the bullpen for the Red Sox have. It's interesting. John said, Why does it make such a difference with Koji? And he said, He brings calmness to the pen. He said, Koji settles other pitchers down. Because he himself is so settled and balanced, yeah. and said yeah. that's interesting. Look at the numbers there. The Sox bullpen in September is the .83 earned run average. Been uh, solid. Due to delivery, I know when we left Detroit, the numbers in September, the Red Sox were number one bullpen ERA, and the Orioles were number two yeah. bullpen ERA. Two ball, two strike count, with two down. I think what happens when you get an arm like Koji who's used to pitching that back end it just makes everybody kind of feel more comfortable knowing that your big arms are back just like the Orioles when they get O'Day back. Yeah. Gonna be a lot of people feeling a lot better out in that bullpen and even in the uh, Orioles. Back end. Got that one down and in and we'll get him. So faces only two no runs on one hit no errors and nobody left on base we go to the bottom of the third Orioles up five two.
looked like there might have been a little problem with the bullpen phones or the connection to New York between innings as so no well, review. went over uh, got on the headset check and see if things were working. They've had trouble with the bullpen phones here last night I know. In any event. Here's so they either have it corrected or advised everybody it's not working we don't know which. <laughs> Here's Moogie Betts. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Betts, Ramirez, and Shaw. Betts grounded out his first time up. Dylan Bundy will come after him for a strike. Betts says, uh, looks like he's going to break the all time mark in a season for home runs against the Orioles. Frank Howard, Tony Bautista, Jose Bautista all had nine. He's got eight. Davis, Weeders, Davis. Ay oh. Had it all planned, planned to reach back. Wanted to pull that in. <laughs> he got it. He can come up with some plays. Uh, what a great athlete here. He and Matt Weeders is busting hard for this one. Now it's so important. One quick look down over Boogie's a little bit. And somehow able to keep the concentration and come down with this play. Nice <laughs> job making it look easy. <laughs> Played by Chris to hang with it and help Matto. Ramirez, a strikeout victim, his first time to the plate. Bundy will get that one in at the knees. Ramirez, a seven game hit streak. Even longer than that, he's hit 392 over the last 13 games. 19 RBIs. Seven home runs in the last 13. Fouls that one back. He will win the award for the player who has gained the most happiness for 2016 from 2015. <laughs> yeah. That's all he does is smile. He's the happiest player right now in Major League Baseball next to Sculpin Machado and Jones and Trumbo and Weeders. <laughs> he loves playing first base so much yeah. and hated playing the outfield Ooh, so much. Boy, did he hate left field. Ground ball that'll go to Hardy on the backhand. JJ with time and we'll get him two down. Well, Dylan Bundy uh, certainly a night owl this season. Take a look at his numbers by day one and two with a 661 earned run average and he gives up a home run every 14.6 ABs at night. Much better. Seven wins, two, four, and three. Almost a home run every 40 at bats. Opponents hitting just 233. Off Bundy for him to be making a lot of night starts here down the stretch. And you would think with that heater he's got during the day, he'd be more effective, be harder to see. Yeah, right. Whatever way it comes. Boy, you'd like a quick inning right here. Shaw started the uh, second inning out with a one out double, would come around to score in one of those bases loaded walks picked up by Hannigan and Pedroia. Oh, one pitch on the way to him. Fastball is going to be inside. As with Pomerantz, Bundy closing in on his career high innings pitched. Coming into the ball game, 94. That ball is going to be a base hit into the shift. Adam Jones able to get it. And Shaw's on two for two. And he is now four for seven against Bundy. Nice swing right there from Shaw. Doubling in his first at bat. Clean single there, back through the middle. Bundy threw 105 innings for a career high in 2012. So two parts of that: one, what the career high was, but more importantly, how long ago that was and how little he's pitched since. Yeah. But I mean, he continues to say he feels strong and no problem. Here's Chris Young. That'll be in the dirt. Weeders. Stops it. Young drew a walk and scored in the second inning. Five game hit streak coming into the ball game. Trying to get to the 300 mark. Young hitting at 290. Four hits in the ball game last night that tied a career high. Fourth time in his career he's had a four hit game. Fouls that one back. This game. Uh, 
talking about Dylan Bundy and, and the innings pitch. It's just such a mental game. You can talk yourself in and out of so many things. <laughs> and I think uh, if Dylan Bundy keeps taking the right attitude, knowing that the routine he's on right now, the way he approaches his work ethic and uh, his daily schedules to stay strong, have anything to do with innings. It's just a matter of how you feel. And if you feel good, you're going to play well. And uh, we're making some adjustments here in this inning after a rough second. Didn't think we we're going to see him again, but. Uh, Locating his heater very well. Luck's going to hang with him. He needs him down the stretch here in these final 20 games being played. One, two, delivery on the way. That'll be popped up third base side. Machado. And he's got it. And that will do it. Good inning for Bundy. No runs on one hit, no errors. And one left on base. Orioles up. Moon, you think? Fourth inning of Orioles baseball brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid. All wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com. Here in Boston today and on the East Coast, clear skies. Temperature was in the mid 80s today. Just perfect weather and a great night as it was last night for game two. Three game set. The Orioles trying to set up a rubber match for tomorrow. My gosh, all in one place. Wow, they have heard they want to be in, they want to be known, they want to be loved and respected. They have the Orioles Hawaiian shirt. Always fashionable. Never out of style. Here's Matt Wieters. I think that was the largest collection of stylish men to be gathered in one place in 2016. Yeah, they were all gathered up on the monster. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good seats. Leaders hit into a field of choice first time up and would score. Five runs, four hits for the Orioles, two runs, four hits for the Red Sox. Fourth inning. Starters rumbling along. One gone, one in. Embry came on to get the three outs in the third inning, one on a double playground ball. So he'll be asked to give some innings here, but with the expanded bullpens, not going to wait with the win so important. Two ball, one strike count on Weeders. Major League. Pop up in the shallow right. Shift was on, so Pedroia. Oh, caught by Bradley on his knees. Pedroia was out there because he was in the shift. And Bradley came in to protect, and lo and behold, made the catch. My goodness. 
What a play by Jackie Bradley Jr. There have been some uh, adventures on some pop ups here already early in this ball game. Pedroy ends up trying to protect himself. Bradley Jr. doesn't lose the concentration on this baseball. Man, oh man. I see, I catch, I sit. <laughs> what a play right there. Yeah. So Waiters is retired. Otherwise, the Orioles get a leadoff man on. J.J. Hardy, big home run. Came in the second inning, his ninth of the year, three RBIs. Hardy getting his third against the Red Sox this season. Now up to 41 batted in overall. Orioles yet another multi homer game. And a swing and a miss on a pitch away. Take a look at J.J. Hardy's power zone, and he got on top of the high fastball. The sixth pitch, top of the strike zone box, right on the top of JJ's danger zone. And again, going for the outside corner, won't get the call on that one. Orioles now is 64 multi homer games this year, far and away the leader in the majors. Multi homer ball games with still about 50% of the runs for the O's coming on home runs. Breaking ball is going to miss away. We'll take a look at JJ's three run blast. Hit the Orioles on the board. High fastball. Swung through the first high heater we had seen from Pomerantz. Did not miss the second. Two two delivery. So close. No call. Embry turns his back. Good eye by JJ. 3 2. Some borderline pitches out there to Hardy. JJ Hardy knows his strike zone in that outside corner. How about this? Nissan pitch track showing targeting that outer edge. Some borderline put pitches all the way through. A couple of them fastballs, a couple of them sliders. And Hardy will take that. That was even further outside. So J.J. Hardy draws the walk with one down here in the fourth inning. Well, the Orioles playing for October, and we don't want you to miss a moment. If you're not at Oriole Park, sh show you back the birds by following Mass and Orioles on Instagram. That's Mass and Orioles on Instagram for photos from the ballpark, exclusive giveaways, and more. Be in like them. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's you. That's you. <laughs> now they're checking themselves out. You I think. are now worldwide. You are the worldwide leader in shirts. <laughs> Pitch taken for a strike. Drew Stubbs through a walk, scored. Embry taking a look over at first base. Hardy. Not going anywhere. But Hannigan just realized he had not been out to the mound in at least <laughs> three minutes, so he is going up. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yesterday we were talking when the uh, Red Sox had put so many marks up early on against the Orioles that uh, it was such a long way to go in the ball game. And of course, the Orioles put up some big numbers, but. Uh, Red Sox able to strike back. Now it has the feel that the Orioles are in complete control of this ball game, but you know the Red Sox can answer right back. So the Orioles got to keep the foot on the gas pedal, keep putting the pressure on this Red Sox uh, pitching staff, keep digging into the bullpen. And a swing and a miss came back with an 89. Took a little off that one. And Stubbs out in front. 0-2 count. Jays have taken the three nothing lead Rays rather over the Jays three nothing Tampa Bay leading Toronto fifth inning affecting the standings of course Dodgers playing at the Yankees no score in that one they are in the fourth inning. Oh two count Hardy at first base Stubbs takes where there have been some close pitches could have gone either way Chris Guccione home plate umpire. Largely noted for pr being pretty much straight up in the strike zone. It's either there in the confines of how it's labeled or not. Where they've been 
Order testing him. Sure have. Here's the one two delivery on the way and another big cut. Two down. He made sure he got that one on the plate 94 mile an hour fastball. Stubbs just pulls off a little bit. A good pitch to hit. The eyes got big with the mistake. On the top of that pitch. Every did some closing at Pawtucket this year. He had uh, eight saves, eight for eight, ERA of .68 at Triple A. That one is going to be in there for a strike. Nolan Rymel delivering one of the two Oriole home runs along with Hardy. Got his also in the second inning after a walk to Stubbs. His sixth home run of the year. And for Reimold, his second career home run here at Fenway. A one pitch to him. There's another one. Just misses. One ball, one strike count. That's in Nolan's power zone. Likes it out over that. Uh, Outer third, but this pitch center cut breaking ball. He smoked over the green monster. Hardy the lead, the 1 1 delivery on the way. He's proven he can hit that spot, isn't he? I'm telling you, he's right there. <laughs> I mean, he could have gotten those calls just as easily as not getting them. Right? They're that close. They are right there. Two and one with two down. Rymold. The hitters count fouls that one back. Take a look at Nolan's home run. Two run shot. For JJ cleared the bases. A walk to Stubbs. It's a two run blast. A bullet. Just getting over the green monster. Tough second inning, five runs on the board. Embry trying to find a way out of the inning. 2 2 pitch on the way, and that's way up. So he too finds the full count. Three balls, two strikes, two down. Hardy will be going at first base. Ramirez is going to stay on the bag with the Orioles leading 5 2 and not giving me a big break with the right hand to hit her up. Full count pitch. Rymel, that's a base hit into left field. Hardy will make a turn and stay. Young up with it will get it in. So Rymel in that number nine spot now, a homer and a single in his two at bats, and he keeps the inning alive for the O's. A couple good swings here. Hard cutter. Good spot. Outer third. Reaches out. It's a good part of the bat on it. Smoking it through the 5 6 hole. Keeping this inning going. We saw Bogarts had moved over towards second base defensively. So Adam Jones, a couple of strikeouts recorded by Pomerantz against him. Now he'll face Embry. Adam is two for four off the Red Sox reliever with a home run. Orioles have five hits. Red Sox have four. Hardy the lead off second base and that ball fouled away. Orioles two for three. Runner in scoring position situations. See Adam the good numbers with runners in scoring position this year at 317 48. RBI for Adam Jones. A couple strikeouts. First two at bats. Can put one in play. Pick up an extra run. Outfield deep. A one delivery on the way to him. Adam launches one in the air. Going back for it is Bradley on the warning track with room and puts it away. Not quite enough, Brad. No runs on one hit, no errors. Two are left on base. Orioles lead by three. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Underway, 5 2, the Orioles on top for Dylan Bundy. Ran into some problems. What the Orioles will like about that so far, Mike, is the fact he responded. Yeah, he sure did. I mean, what a great answer after that tough inning. It seemed like he lost all his command. It seemed like Dylan Bundy was going to be done in this ball game. Both starting pitchers were headed for an early exit, but Bundy settled in, and boy, was he driving the ball downhill that last inning. Still great fastball velocity. He is working into the middle of the ball game. So Dylan going after. Victory number nine on the year. Jackie Bradley Jr. will lead it off. Machado will play just off the grass at third. Hannigan and then Pedroia at the top of the order. Bradley picked up a base hit. He's now two for four with a home run lifetime off Dylan Bundy. Dylan trying to get out of a little bit of a funk. In the last five starts, he's gone two and two, but his ERA has been six and a half in those five games. Prior to that, he'd gone four and one, and his ERA was 1.8. That's why we were talking about a little bit of concern for the Orioles. Joe Kelly up. Change up right mm. there. Six miles an hour. Sells it so well with the arm. Speed, everything coming out of the same slot, which is crucial. Starter came back inside and got him. So Bundy picks up the strikeout. That will be his third of the game. Picks up right where he left off in that third inning where he was very efficient. Boy, he really pulled the string on this one. 83 miles an hour. His changeup has varied from 83 to about 88 in this ball game, but the location has been exceptional. By the knees on all of them. Ryan Hannigan doing the catching. RBI bases loaded walk in the second inning. Both RBIs for the Red Sox. Pedroia's Hannigan's with the sacks full. Meanwhile, the Orioles. Three run homer by Hardy, a two run homer by Rimo. 0 1 pitch on the way to him, and that heater he just got by him. And checking the mask after that got by him is Chris Guccione. Well, he's all exposed here. Fastball up and in, just Ooh. over Weeder's glove and catching him right on the chin strap. Poof. Knocking the uh, throat guard off one of its hinges. The Billy Goat. Billy Goat chin protector. Well, money gets ahead again on two. And again, waiting on it, we'll foul it back into the seats. Well, we really shouldn't waste any time after that uh, swing at the fastball, 95. Was it almost uh, 
directly over the Red Sox dugout. Might as well throw another heater. This one a little more inside at 95 and again foul back. Minnesota Twins have jumped all over the Tigers tonight. They've got a 7 1 lead going to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Tigers are going to keep their run alive for the wild card. Half a swing down the line, and that is foul. Right in the first row. And a nice catch made. Tigers are a game behind Toronto and the Orioles for a wild card position. They have been struggling though. And the Twins putting a number up on them tonight so far. And you see that wild card race in Detroit. Take a look at that loss column, which matters. Just one game separating all of those teams as you get down the list. 0 2 delivery on the way, and that one will be a little bit outside. The Tigers was looking today, their starting rotation in 15 games has gone 0 and 6 with a 4 5 ERA. And they haven't gotten to six innings in eight out of the last 15. Ooh, uh, another one right there. Got him in the outside corner. Hannigan saying, Why didn't you give me those when I was catching? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what he was saying. But this one uh, catching a little bit more of the plate. Weeders receiving it very well. Take a look at where it ends up. Yeah, ball all over the white. Across the knees. Pitch from Bundy. So two down and the top of the order Dustin Pedroia. That one may have ticked the end of the batter not and went by. Pedroia is uh, busting right now. Obviously all that matters to him are the Red Sox wins but he's also got a shot at a batting title. Altuve came in hitting 337 today. Pedroia 330. He has closed what was an enormous gap. On uh, Houston's Jose Altuve. Yeah, before he moved to that leadoff spot, he has been raking in what we've been talking about. He was hitting under 300. <laughs> he lifts it up now, second in the American League and buying, yeah, for a batting title. He has loved that number one spot, 447 in the leadoff spot since August 10. 2 1 delivery on the way to him. Pedroia check swing pretty close. David Rackley says he did not go around. Three ball, one strike count. Good breaking ball here, located well. Down and away. Pedroia able to recognize it soon enough and hold it up. Buck not happy, but that was the right call. 3 1 delivery on the way, and that is fouled off. And a three ball two strike count. Bundy a sea of calm in a turmoil of pennant chasing. Yeah. He doesn't react very much emotionally. It's a very steady look. 3 2 delivery on the way. Pedroia a little ground ball to short. Hardy's got to hustle it over on the backhand. The throw. Nice play by Davis. J.J. Hardy knew he had to hustle it, and Davis knew he had to scoop it, and that's exactly what each of them did. The side retired in order, and the Orioles still have a 5-2 lead.
Pomerantz chased out near Fenway Park after just two plus innings. The Red Sox starter, five runs, four hits, two home runs against him. Joe Kelly now has come on, third pitcher used. Yeah, well, of course he has started started the season as a starter for the Red Sox. Sent out Triple A and not used as a starter, used as a reliever. So the primary are going to see the power fastball. It is nice to show it off. Freshman up there. Uh, 96 to 100 miles an hour. Occasionally, mix in the breaking ball. Kelly has had a couple of game starts against the Orioles this year, and they hit him hard. Nine runs, 14 hits, seven in the third innings in those two starts. We'll get the outside corner with a fastball on Jonathan Scope. Jonathan has an 0 for 2. He's grounded out, struck out 0 for 5 in the first two games of this series. Red Sox have won the last three games played against the Orioles. Orioles trying to end that string tonight. One ball, one strike pitch, that'll be up high. Good job by Heath Embry, who came on for two innings, one hit, one walk, two strikeouts. Kelly with the 2 1 delivery. That'll be a base hit the other way. And a chop down on one right there. And Scope's got himself a leadoff single. Well, let's take our Major League notebook and open it up to the pennant chasing page. The Cubs' magic number to clinch is three. They can do it of all places. The Cardinals, their arch rival, if they can win tonight and tomorrow. They are leading tonight 2 0. Uh, with a win tonight, the Mariners will have the longest win streak since eight in a row in July of 2013. Seattle pitchers 1.83 in the last six and the Giants 9 and 0 against the Padres before the All Star break they're 0 and 4 against them since the break game two of the three game series tonight they lost last night. Pitch is a strike on the inside corner to Manny Machado. Cubs wrapping up a pennant well a division in St. Louis. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Cardinal fans will love that. Cubs fans will really love it if they can do it. And he fouls that one back. I think I've flinched about four times tonight. We've got some foul balls that have been too close. Yeah. Right straight back. So been a number of pitches that have just been missed by hitters on both sides tonight. Manny a base at third inning one for two. We're up there in the middle of that picture. That upper area. Well, there you are. Waving at you right there. That's it. That's <laughs> where we are. Here's the 0-2 delivery on the way and like a hard slider that ends up away. One ball, two strike count on Manny. Joe Kelly, one of those mysteries you see every now and then. The great stuff, but uh, not having the success as a starter. Of course, came over from St. Louis, was a young starter. Red Sox have been trying to groom him into this rotation. Been plenty of opportunities, it's just not taking. Went around on that. Ball well, kicked away. Runner at first base, strikeout. So Kelly gets Machado for the first out. Jonathan Scope remains at first. Here's Spike in the hard breaking ball. Gearing up to get to a 100 mile an hour heater. Just check swinging on the hard slider. Mm. Perfect place to throw it. Bury it when you're ahead. Nice block by Hannigan. That'll bring up Mike Trumbo. Get into a double play, base hit. One for five in the two games. Mark launches that one in the air, right center field, playable. Bets. Runner halfway will go back. And there are two down. Well, the push for the postseason, your chance to earn postseason ticket priority. Place deposits for 2017 plans. You can do that right now, and you got to get it done by Monday, September 26th, to guarantee access to the postseason this year. Visit Orioles.com slash postseason for details two down scope with the leadoff single still on at first base comfortable anyway 
Chris Davis. A walk and a run scored, and he has struck out. Shift full force here with two down. And Davis takes the pitch for a ball. The teams recently have been uh, busting Chris Davis in hard with fastballs. Just a steady diet of heaters in the inside corner to the top of the zone. Davis still had some pretty good success here recently. 1 0 pitch to him away. He is 5 for 10 against Joe Kelly with a home run. 500 batting average against the Red Sox right hander. Two oak out with two down. Ramirez holding. Scope at first base. Two oak delivery by Kelly. Hannigan hanging on to it for a while, but it won't matter. Three and oh. That's why why he's not getting uh, rewarded for those borderline pitches. He's holding his glove there, old school. You know, just holds it for an extra three or four seconds. But where is it? It's right here. <laughs> that has somehow never worked. I don't know. No. <laughs> 3 0 pitch on the way, and that's there for a strike. Three and one. I said an umpire talking to an umpire about that. He said, "Just think about this. I've already made the call." Before the ball hits the glove, I know then whether it's a strike or not. You can hold it there forever. I've already made the call. Three, one, two away, and that one's going to miss down low. So he didn't want a lot to do with Davis. Kelly will surrender the walk to one, two out. All right, PNC minor league report. PNC for the achiever in you. How about Alex Wells, left-handed pitcher, 19 years old, out of Australia, signed as a free agent. Last August, he had himself a very good short season in Aberdeen. 0.91 earned run average, third lowest earned run average. The starters in the New York Penn League. Alex Wells also going down to instructional league, which uh, is starting soon. If it hasn't started already. Let's do the instructional league in South Wales, and we all get to go. <laughs> Runners on at first and second, two down. And the pitch taken away. September 19, opening day for the Instructional League. And that's in beautiful Sarasota through October 11. Leaders, fielder's choice, he scored. Robbed of a hit by Bradley on a sit down catch that he made in the fourth inning. 1 0 delivery outside. It's a big at bat. Orioles get a chance to add to their 5 2 lead. Orioles five runs, three hits in the second. Hardy and Reimold, the homers, accounting for all of it. Two bases loaded walks in the second inning for the Red Sox for their two runs. John Farrell getting a little antsy in there. Joe Kelly this is a big reason why he got moved out of the rotation. The command problems. He was averaging uh, over six walks per nine innings. Here's 2 0 delivery, and that'll be put up in the air behind second base. Shortstop. He's got it. Jackie Bradley Jr. back off. Bogart the catch. No runs a hit. Two left on. Orioles lead by three.
Jimenez the Orioles starter citizenship here in the United States came back to the ball club today and this is what he said. I've been part of this country since I was since I was 19 years old and then uh, this country had given me the opportunity to be a better person to be uh, to and not only for me but for my family and I think even back in my country I've been been able to help a lot of people just for the fact that, or the opportunity that this country has given me. So I mean, it's something that you don't, you don't, put, you don't have any doubt in your mind that you want to do this. From the Dominican Republic, and now a citizen of the United States, all smiles today for Baldo Jimenez being congratulated by all his teammates and members of the Red Sox organization as well. He's got a lot to smile about, hasn't he? Here yes. recently. Great comeback as a starter and then gets his U.S. citizenship in between starts. Dylan Bundy for the Orioles. He has walked three, struck out four. Red Sox have just two runs on four hits off him. Both of those runs on the bases loaded walks. Bogarts has grounded out and struck out. He will foul that one back out of play. Bogarts a couple of hits, eight at bats, lifetime off Bundy now. Dylan looking for his first win. Against the Red Sox and his ninth win of the year. The Orioles, in his 11 previous starts, have won six and lost five this year. 1 1 delivery by Bundy, and that'll be put up in the air. That's deep to center field. Way back and goodbye over the monster. Bogarts delivers the home run, and it is 5 3. Dylan Bundy went to the well one too many times on Bogarts with that changeup, struck him out in his second at bat. Threw him a few changeups, but it's risky because he throws it with a two seam movement. It fades back into the heart of the plate. And Bogarts does not miss it. 19 home runs on the season for Xander Bogarts. His first against the Orioles this year, but it is his 11th RBI of the year. Against the Orioles, and it is a 5 3 game. That's home run number 16 off Dylan Bundy and David Ortiz. Ortiz has grounded out the first base twice. He did it with the bases loaded for a big out that Bundy got in the second inning. Ortiz will foul that one back, and he got Weeders. Smiling about that one. There's Big Poppy. He's got the big lean back swing. And ooh. Immediately turns around though to check on Matt Weeders. Caught the edge of the mask and just twists it off. Which way didn't catch Matt Weeders square. Yes, missed down low. Ortiz has had a hit at each of the last ten against the Orioles. Not in this one yet. Six home runs, 13 RBIs in those ball games. Here's the 2 1 delivery on the way, and Ortiz will get one down the line. That's going to be a base hit. Played in the corner. He's going to try for two as a getaway. And Ortiz goes into second base. Stubbs could not handle it cleanly as it rolled around the wall. Ortiz was going to stop. But when he saw the ball get away, he took off. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, Ortiz has seen balls get down in this right field. One of the toughest right fields to play in all of baseball. Always getting hung up on this ball, just beyond the pesky pole. Picks underneath. And Ortiz head up, sees it get away from Stubbs, hustling on into second base. Get himself in a scoring position. The error will be charged on Stubbs, a single for Ortiz. Error moves him down to second base. So the Red Sox who had trailed five nothing have made it five three and now they get the potential tying run to the plate here in the fifth inning. Mookie Betts has grounded out and popped out. He's now three for seven with a home run off Bundy and pops it way up in the air to shallow left field. Rimo gets underneath it puts it away in a major league pop up. First out here in the sixth inning. 
when the Orioles able to hold him to an 0 for 3 so far. Mookie Betts. Good job by Ben. That's going back shaking his head right there. Thinks he should have got that either. On Dylan Bundy. Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez has struck out and grounded out. 286 on the year. Closing in on 100 RBIs. 97. Runs batted in. Tease off second base. Foul back. And another one just missed. For Ramirez during the hit streak. He's had 11 hits in his last 30 at bats, four home runs, nine RBIs. He has had an 11 game hit streak this year, which is his high at seven right now. Tommy Hunter up for the second time, and he was up last night and did not appear in the game. The one delivery on the way, and that's going to be another major league pop up. Second base, scope. He's got it. And a couple of big outs recorded here in the fifth inning. Well, the birds are going to return home uh, Thursday to begin a final homestand of the regular season on Friday. The Orioles will host the Rays 7:05. First 20,000 fans, 15 and over, get the Orioles high socks. Show your colors. Be part of the postseason push. For tickets, Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. Adam with the high socks. Rymold's got him in left field. Scopey at second. Two down. Ortiz on at second base. Home run by Bogarts. The run that's scored this inning. Travis Shaw has had a double and a single. Shaw puts one in the air to center. Adam Jones has it lined up. Adam comes back a bit, makes the catch, and Bundy again works his way out of that. A home run, Bogarts, 5 3 Orioles. Baseball on Masson brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by First National Bank, redefining convenience in banking. Larry Thorne, Mike Vordick with you. And today, Mike, are you ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rick. Happy birthday to you. Rick Dempsey, birthday today. The man who made throws and slid like nobody else when the tarp was out and it was wet. Go, go get him! <laughs> Happy birthday, Rick. Good to be 39. <laughs> I love to see when he throws from behind the plate. What a cannon he oh, has! Goodness, and quick. Woo. Orioles have the 5-3 lead. Batting here in the sixth inning, J.J. Hardy. Hardy takes the strike. His ninth home run, second inning. Good for three. 
Davis had reached on a walk. Weeders on a fielder's choice. They scored ahead of him. And then Reimold a couple of batters later after Stubbs walk would hit his sixth home run. Hardy has also drawn a walk in the game. Joe Kelly on the mound. Pitch will be grounded foul. Two strike count. Right back with you tomorrow night. Final game of this three game set. Mass and two, 6.30 O's extra, 7 o'clock the ball game. Kevin Gosman, 7 and 10. Rick Porcello, 20 and 3. The two scheduled starters. Kelly's delivery. And a one ball, two strike count. JJ now at 263. 41 RBIs on the year. That stance opened up. Both eyes looking for the baseball. One, two in the air towards the green monster down the line. Young is over, has room, and will put it away. One down here in the sixth inning. On Saturday, get ready for the promotional giveaway you've been waiting for. It. First 25,000, 15 and over. It'll be the Rays game. You get either the vintage Orioles Bobble Boy or Bobble Girl. So you can add to your collection that's coming up Saturday, Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. Bubble Boys have been on display throughout this road trip. <laughs> I think he had a great popsicle, I'm not sure. And Stubbs will take the pitch for a strike. Stubbs has walked and scored and struck out. Second ball game consecutively in which he has made the Start in right field. With the Orioles, game number nine that he's appeared in, and the pitch will be taken inside. 258 on the year. He's had only 31 at bats all season, and uh, coming into the game at 11 of those with the Orioles. Kelly with a 1 1 delivery to him, breaking ball tied him up. It's in there for a strike. If he can command that slider. He'll be back in the starting rotation. The secondary pitches just too inconsistent for Kelly. He's been rushing the heater up there. He's been 100 miles an hour a couple times. It's the O's already in this game. Kelly with the 1 2 delivery in came in, fouled away. Uh, Drew holds it one and two. Well, the Orioles, uh, boy, they change day to day. Yesterday, box score completely different than today. A lot of hits. There's Jonathan Scope, Machado, Trumbull with the singles. How about J.J. Hardy, that three run home run. One for two in the game with a walk. There's uh, Nolan having a huge night down in the number four hole or number nine hole. Thinking of a base hit and a two run home run. Missed with that one and a two ball two strike count. Tampa Bay still beating Toronto four to two Toronto batting in the bottom half of the seventh inning of that ball game. Smiley a couple of runs five hits over five and two thirds innings. Stroman for the Jays three runs four hits over six both starters are out of the ball game. Two ball two strike count. Breaking ball down. Good pitch. It was a knee buckler. Not looking for this breaking ball at all. Nissan pitch track been working inside. Starts the breaking ball right at Stubbs. It's like a little front knee buckle. And it drops down and in. And that in their third strike three. Two down, nobody on here in the sixth inning, and Nolan Reimold. The home run and a base hit, two for two in the ball game. Kelly's pitch to him. A hundred miles an hour. Big arm really uh, cut it loose since he moved into the bullpen. Hard showing off the power fastball. Ground ball to second base. Pedroia moves in front of it over to Ramirez and the Orioles. Are retired in order for the second time tonight. They lead it 5 3.
the game. It's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. Well, after the O's offense put five runs up in the second, the Red Sox offense put some pressure on Bundy. Bases loaded. He gets Bogarts to swing over the changeup and Big Poppy to ground out to first base and minimize the damage and get out of a huge second inning jam. Dylan Bundy, yeah, he's still pitching in this ball game. Red Sox have left six on base. Orioles have stranded four. Bundy. Going the distance. Here's what they've done against him. Red Sox box score. Be careful. Dylan Bundy working his way through this lineup. Here's the Bogart solo home run to get him a little bit closer. Danger at the top and the bottom. All the way through this Red Sox lineup. And the breaking ball will be taken up and in. Chris Young leading it off. Young to walk and a run scored, and he has popped out. Bundy's delivery to him. Fastball, it'll be inside. 2 0 at 84. This is really impressive that Dylan Bundy has worked his way into the sixth inning here after that rough second. More composure, great makeup for Dylan Bundy. Leadoff man's been on twice. Double in the first, home run in the fifth. Bundy with a 3 0 count. Young drills it. Foul. Wow. I cannot believe the shots we've seen here tonight. We've had three balls that have been up there. You don't see many baseballs hit to the upper deck down the left field line. Yeah. Balls leaving Fenway Park in a hurry. And that one's going to be inside. That is a leadoff walk. Young gets it. Sixth inning. Bradley Hannigan to follow. This copyrighted telecast presented by Authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Gary Thorne and Mike Bordick here at Fenway 5 3 Orioles lead Bundy now with a runner on at first base. Here is Bradley a base hit and he has struck out. Machado in at third almost got him. Thigh high but by and a 1 0 count. Dylan has come in hard with some fastballs in this ball game. This Red Sox line up to move the feet. It is important. Both bullpens active. Ziegler, Barnes getting up to throw for the Red Sox. Tommy Hunter's been up a lot. And Joe Walters. Got to get him in the ball game tonight if they have to use a reliever. Throw over. We'll get Young back to the bag. But he tests getting people up in the bullpen and not using them. He did once last night. Hunter didn't pitch. He's been up twice in this game. 1 0 delivery by Bundy, and that's going to be outside. So the count goes to two and zero oh on Bradley. That will send Weeders out. That might be it. Got to that point. Just can't harness it anymore. Of course, fell behind Young, which led to the walk. You're falling behind Bradley Jr. Not want to be uh, inconsistent with your command. This lineup turns over, and you don't have the good fastball. You'll be in trouble. Dangerous pitch right here to Jackie Bradley Jr. 2 0 delivery on the way, and that is right there for a strike. And it in. Two ball, one strike count. 23 year old right hander who's battled his way through this game. ERA on the road coming in was 5.23. And he's given up just three on six hits so far in this one. Runner off first base. That one is put high up in the air. Second base scope. Center field Jones. Jones in. And Adam will put it away. 
Now there's the first out here in the sixth inning. Runner back to first. On Saturday, September 24, part of Fan Appreciation Weekend, the Orioles take on the Diamondbacks. 705 game, first 25,000, 15 and over. Get the Orioles hooded sweatshirt. Get in on the postseason drive. Get your tickets at Orioles.com. So that will be it for Dylan Bundy, as he will go five and a third, responsible for the base runner on, surrendered so far, three runs, six hits. Bundy out of the ball game. It wasn't easy, but he worked himself through. Had some great pitches, getting Ramirez on the high fastball. How about that nasty change up there? And Bradley Jr. getting one as well. But the fastball was spot on here, locating it down at the knees. He was moving it all around at one tough inning where he gave up the two runs, but worked himself out of it. Impressive that he even made it through five and a third. 95 pitches thrown for Dylan Bundy. Fastball was good tonight. Great velocity as well. Tommy Hunter now into the ball game. He's got a power fastball as well. He uses it 82% of the time, mid to high 90s with the Hunter heater. 376 earned run average, 21 punch outs for Tommy Hunter and holding opponents to that 253 average, right? He's just 217. Hannigan up, runner on at first base and one away. Hannigan has gone one for three lifetime off Tommy Hunter. This is the second appearance this year for Tommy against the Red Sox. Two thirds of an inning. No runs on one hit. Lifetime five and two with two saves against Boston. Catcher Ryan Hannigan to be followed by Dustin Pedroia. Young at first, pretty good lead. Ground ball, got a chance right here. There's one. Hardy over. One pitch, they get the double play. So Hunter gets it done in a hurry. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left, six complete.
Pacheco highlights game two of the three games set. And after a Trumbo single and a Davis walk, J.J. Hardy picking up his ninth home run of the season off Drew Pomerantz. And then another walk by Stubbs. Nolan Reimhold, it's a two-run dinger to run Drew Pomerantz. Five runs second inning. With the starter out of the ball game. 5-3 lead for the Orioles as we enter the top of the seventh. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free great quote. Matt Barnes out of the Red Sox bullpen. Power fastball, 94 to 99 with the heater. Curveball and a change as well. 426 earned run average from Barnes. 66 punch outs in his 61 and a third innings of work. And it's hitting 247 overall. We go to the seventh inning. Orioles 5 6 and 1 Red Sox 3 6 and 0 oh. Adam Jones to lead it off Adam 0 oh for 3 in the ball game 0 oh for 6 in the first two games of the series he has struck out twice and fly to center field Jones 0 oh for 5 off Barnes goes after the first pitch that was up for Barnes on the year against the Orioles. He has been on in his career a number of games. Five this year, four runs, seven hits, seven in the third innings. One strike count. Right hander's pitch, and again going up. That's where they've been working at him is up. And he's not been able to lay off some of those high heaters. 0 and 2. Well, Adams caught some of those here recently uh, in Detroit. On a high fastball, get it out of the ballpark. Adam just swinging through a couple. Maybe that green monster getting in his head a little bit. Barnes with the two strike pitch to him, even higher and too high to be caught as Hannigan had that one bounce off his glove. Kelly worked two innings, no runs, one hit. He walked one, struck out two. Embry worked two innings, no runs, one hit, walked one, struck out two. Exact same line for the two relievers. Here's the one two delivery, and that'll be outside hard. 97. Tight ball game. Both managers will be into this one, trying to find an edge here in the Seven, eighth, and ninth innings. Two two delivery. Barnes gets it in to short. Bogarts. <laughs> Seventh inning with one out. Our PNC inside the numbers. Some of the Orioles slamming the door. Active win streaks when leading after the sixth inning. Orioles leading the way with 31. And a great back end of the bullpen. Of course, Zach Britton perfect in his save. Opportunities. Brad Brock back there as well. Of course, Givens ended up here waiting for Darren O'Day to get back. But yeah, this team is tough. Solid closer and setup man. And of course, the Orioles the ability to put on a few more runs late in ball games. He's looking the best closer in baseball today. One down here, Jonathan Scope. Jonathan a base hit one for three in the ball game one for six here in the first two of this three game set. And delivery to him will be high and will miss away. Toronto trying to come back against Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay still leading it 4 2, seventh inning. Pitching matchup. Shutouts in uh, Yankee Stadium. The Dodgers and the Yankees no score. They are in the seventh inning of their game. Chopper, right up front of home plate. Shaw, not even close. It'll go off the fence in front of the dugout. So Jonathan Scope is on as Shaw let that one rip. And Ramirez saw it coming and never even moved 
for fear of running into the runner. He's kind of wondering what the heck happened right there. Yoik's in a way. Oh, a nice job coming in to get the baseball, but never gets a grip. Scope put some pressure on him, hustling down the line. Grimace, 17 errors charged against Shaw on the year. See if the Orioles can take advantage of this. They give him a hit on that. Wow! <laughs> How is that a hit? Scope will take it. Due for four. So Jonathan Scope on, and that one fouled off hard. Manny Machado got around on it. One for three with a base hit. Manny is covering the baseball right now. Every ball he's hitting is hard. Even his outs. First swing of the game from Machado. A bullet out to center field. Well, Manny making this drive for the MVP. Still, uh, his name doesn't get brought up as often as others, but he's been on a roll here. That's 30 or so games, 13 home runs, and 31 RBI. MVP largely depends on does your team make the playoffs. Vote comes before the playoffs start, but after the regular season's over. Way up. Hannigan almost broke his back on that one. Trying to haul it in. One ball, one strike out. From the knee jumping up. Save this one from getting to the backstop. One ball, one strike count on Manny. Scope, short lead. Another ferocious cut on the pitch up. Seven mile an hour heater, some big arms in this ball game. High fastball. Been uh, hit by J.J. Hardy. Three run home run on the high heater. And the one two delivery to him right back up there. Barnes gets a strikeout, two down. Scope remains on at first base. Oh, looks so good. And Manny so good at the high heater, but a little extra life there, 97 miles an hour, and you see it almost looking like it's rising through the zone. Hannigan calling for the high fastball. Executed perfectly to get Machado. Trumbo timeout asked for. Hannigan wanting to go through the signs again. Scope with a base hit on at first base or two down. Trumbo a base hit one for three. Orioles DH. Target set up away. Ball came back in. And Trumbo fouls it right straight back. Another shot at that one. Cutter stayed up, out over for Trumbo. Oh, one count, two away. In the air to right. Mookie Betts. He's got it. Seven inning stretch time here at Fenway. Orioles have had the lead throughout. Lead at 5 3.
the bottom half of the seventh inning. Tommy Hunter will stay out pitched only one batter got a double play ground ball to end the sixth inning now the top of the order. Pedroia has had a double a walk a ground ball out. He's picked up an RBI on a bases loaded walk. And Hunter's delivery to him will catch the inside corner for a strike. This Red Sox team has had a big advantage here at home this year. 41 and 30. They've hit 304 in their home ballpark. That ball is going to be a base hit in the right center field. Stubbs will come over to get it. Pedroia's on, and for the second time, the Red Sox will get the potential tying run to the plate in this game. Well, the most popular way to follow the Orioles postseason push MLB.com and bat number one app. Enjoy game day live game video highlights stat cast news and more get it. Download uh, MLB.com and bat for your favorite devices now. Boston has the number one ranking in baseball in average and in doubles here at home. They lead the American League and rank second behind Colorado and runs per game at home on base percentage slugging. And an OPS. So the Orioles holding them so far to three runs, not easy here in this ballpark. Here's Xander Bogarts. He delivered a home run, his 19th, leading off the fifth inning, has struck out and grounded out. Each team now with seven hits in the game. Bogarts one for four off Tommy Hunter. Short lead at first base. Bogarts will take it for a strike inside at the letters. One and one. Fastball from Tommy Hunter, 96 miles an hour, La tailing action. He works on that inner inside corner. Bogarts has raised his average to an even 300. 19 home runs, 85 RBIs. One ball, one strike delivery will be popped up first base side. Scope will come over and we'll put it away. Big out. Boy, the Oriole pitchers have gotten big outs. That'll be it for Tommy Hunter with David Ortiz coming to the plate with one on and one down. Hunter will come out of there and the Orioles will match up with Donnie Hart. Coming on to pitch to Ortiz. Bottom of the seventh, the Orioles lead it by two. Up comes Big Poppy. Hart looking to be the next Brian Mattis to try to contain David Ortiz going to do with a good fastball from the side deception in his delivery fastball up in the mid 90s that sweeping slider as well. This will be his 15th appearance for the O's working 12 and two thirds nothing on the board for an earned run average and holding opponents down to just that 209 average lefties just 185. Well this is some way to have your first appearance against the Red Sox. Pennant chase underway. Runner on.
and David Ortiz coming to the plate with the team up by two. That's the situation for Hart. Ortiz, a base hit, one for three in the ball game. He went over while Hart was warming up to take a look at the iPad video to have some idea of what Hart was throwing and how it looked before he came to the plate. One down. Bunting inside for a ball. If he wants to bunt, the Orioles will be delighted to have him lay the ball, ball down. That's somewhat facetious. He's got that whole third base side open. The Orioles certainly don't want to see the potential go ahead run coming to the plate, especially in Mookie Betts. Pick your poison. 1 0 count, 1 down, shift at double play position. And that's what we were talking about with Scott Kuba and all these reverse numbers left handers against lefties and righties here in this situation Scott said look where they stand on the mound you got Hart way over there so he's almost throwing from the from first base to a left hander like that and it's a strike it's a very tough angle for a left handed hitter. Yeah, that breaking ball just coming from behind David Ortiz great look right here crossbody delivery it looks like it's going to catch Ortiz in the hip breaks back over the inside corner. Hard gets ahead of him a ball and two strikes. Oriel bullpen remains active with Mookie Betts on deck. Here's the one two delivery and Ortiz will take it outside. Count goes to two and two. Ortiz hitting 367 against the Orioles this year. He's had six home runs and 13 RBIs against the O's. Two ball, two strike count. He's hit 303 off left handers. 2 2 delivery on the way. Ortiz, did he go? Three two. Seen that slider that starts at him now a few times. He's looking for it there. Pitch number seven of this at bat. Three two delivery again. Ortiz pops it up. Going back Manny Machado. Rimo will call him off and make the catch. And everybody where they're supposed to be. As Hart went over to cover third. And he gets the out. Boy, what a great job by Donnie Hart. First pitch. Inside corner for a ball. Ortiz showing a bunt. The slider there. Another slider to get back into the count and ahead. And then you work the perimeter. Hope for a chase. Pop, you've seen this before, showing the great patience in some tough pitches, fouling off a nasty slider right there, and then missing the slider down and away. So he got the job done, and now Brock on.
Ortiz and now Brad Brock's turn. Face Mookie Betts. Take a look at his pitch arsenal. The fastball 60% of the time. Power heater, power slider, turbo change 22%. 1.78 earned run average. This will be his 63rd appearance out of the O's bullpen, leading the O's relievers in appearances. Home sitting just 192. Righties 102. Off Brock, 22 of 23 runners stranded, 96% for Brock. Pedroia is on at first base. Hart got the big out on Ortiz. Now two down. Mookie Betts striking the inside corner. Betts has gone one for three off Brock, a home run. Brad is pitching for the sixth time this year against the Red Sox. Three runs, four hits, and five and two thirds innings, including two home runs against him. Mookie Betts waiting. Betts will pop it up. Left field. Rymold comes in and will put it away, and the bullpen gets it done. No runs on one hit, no errors. One left on base, still 5 3 0s. This three-game set here at Fenway tomorrow. Kevin Gosman will be on the mound against Rick Porcello. All right, coverage on Mass and 2, 6.30 O's Extra presented by Jeep, followed by game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Mass. And let's take a look at our Quicken Loans Rocket Arms. Brought to you, of course, by Quicken Loans. Yeah, Kevin Gosman making the start tomorrow. 4-0 with a 1.99 earned run average in his last five starts on a great roll. For the birds here down the stretch, and Porcello mm, would be the leading uh, Cy Young candidate right now with his 20 wins and just three losses. Should be a great matchup tomorrow night here at Fenway Park. Robbie Ross coming out of the Red Sox bullpen, fastball 57% of the time, good heater in the mid 90s. And breaking ball is the slider. He's going to flip in a curveball as well. 335 earned run average, 18 walks for Ross on the year. Chris Davis will lead it off against him and he'll go into the shift. The Droy is way out there. Makes the play for the out. One pitch, one out here in the top of the eighth inning. Yankees have scored two in the seventh. RBI is Gregorius, who had been in the slump. And another one by Jacoby Ellsbury, both coming off the bench to get it. So the Yankees lead the Dodgers 2 nothing at Yankee Stadium in the top of the eighth inning. Toronto. Still trailing Tampa Bay 4 2. They are in the ninth. Here's Matt Weeters. Weeters popped out, flied out, hit into a fielder's choice, got on that fielder's choice, and scored in the second inning. All of the Oriole runs coming in one inning in that second on the home runs by Hardy and by Reimold. 1 0 count on Matt. Take the pitch down and the 2 0 count from Ross. Orioles would dearly love to add at least one more here 
With the Red Sox having two more at bats. Left handers delivery on the way and that's going to be outside. Ross against the Orioles. Fifth game he's been in. Orioles have touched him up. Five runs, six hits in just four innings. He's got an 0 1 record against the Orioles this year. Three zero delivery on the way. Weeders hoping to get one to drive. Fouls it off. Three and one. They don't get many two uh, too many opportunities. Excuse me. That green light. They have a lead five three. You just mentioned it. They need a tack on run. Weeders trying to get one right there. Three one pitch on the way to third. Off the body to short. Played by Bogarts. New. Weeders is on with a base hit. Shaw went down and it ricocheted all the way over to Bogarts. And then Bogarts couldn't get the handle. Thank goodness, Matt Weeders had <laughs> been thrown out there. I mean, this is a bullet Get into the hot corner. One hop and a piece of Shaw's body and kicking directly over to Bogarts at shortstop. Look at Bogarts over there. He had a shot at Weeders, but couldn't get the handle on the baseball. Weeders picking up the knock. Red Sox asking if uh, Shaw is okay. He felt that sting. Mm -hmm. Weeders on with a single. Here's Hardy, the home run in the second inning. His ninth, good for three RBIs. He has walked and flied out. Weeders on with the Orioles' eighth hit. Hardy takes it outside. Lexus of Towson drive of the game. J.J. Hardy, two birds on in front of him, and he gets on top of a Pomerantz high heater and crushes it over the green monster. He goes on the board, 3-0 in the second inning. 1-0 count, one down. Hardy will take it away. Our drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, the area's number one luxury dealer. Come see why at LexusofTowson.com. Two oh one away. Orioles out hitting the Red Sox now eight seven. Barnes worked an inning gave up a hit at one strikeout. Ross on for Barnes. Hardy will take that down low. J.J. Hardy lifetime here at Fenway just a two ten batting average but he has had seven home runs. Carl Willis. The pitching coach is coming out here with a 3 0 count. Fell behind uh, Weeders and then falls behind J.J. Hardy. Weeders out in the Red Sox bullpen. Baseball players start believing somebody was reading their lips. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are so many secret plays. You know. uh, <laughs> uh, gloves, hands, hats. Rio Cow, JJ Hardy. Strike in the outside corner. Three and one. No lead at first for Matt Weeders. 3 1 delivery on the way, and he walked him. So the Orioles get a shot at getting one or more here in the eighth inning. As the Orioles have runners on at first and second, one away, John Farrell is on his way out. That will do it for Ross. And again, you see the effect of the expanded roster here in September. We'll see the fifth reliever for the Red Sox in this game.
Brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. And by American Standard Heating and Air for the best in home comfort. Choose the brand voted number one. American Standard Heating and Air right now gets special financing. Find your dealer at midatlanticcomfort.com. Harry Thorne, Mike Bordick, crunch time in the ball game. Mike Laborn has come up to pinch it. And take a look at uh, Noe Ramirez. His pitch arsenal this season, the fastball 51% of the time, nothing overpowering at all, 87 to 90. It's a changeup and a slider to go along with it. Changeup definitely the best secondary pitch from Ramirez. But you see, 635 earned run average, seven walks. He has a very deceptive delivery, but his stuff this doesn't have that wow effect. Opponents hitting 349 off Ramirez. Up the uh, three long balls. 43% of his inherited runners have been stranded. Very good number there. Orioles have runners on at first and second base. Born on as the pinch hitter for Stubbs. The drill walk scored and struck out twice. Goes after the first pitch. There's one. Runners will move up. So going after the first pitch, Bourne grounds out to Ramirez. There are two down now with two in scoring position. He thought about going somewhere else, but uh, decided he better hang on to it. And now Rymo will be coming out, and Kim, Young Su Kim, will come on to pinch hit for Nolan Rymo. Rymo the home run, a single, and he grounded out, getting his six home runs, second inning good for two. Nolan out of the Ball game having done his job, and uh, Kim will come up. Kim coming off the bench, four for six as a pinch hitter for the Orioles. Overall, with that 308 average, four home runs. Two down. It's a big at bat. Base hit here scores a couple of runs. No. See if the Orioles can get another big two out hit. Kim's been putting together some pretty good at bats. He'll use the whole field. Which will be taken up for a ball. Weeders a single at third base, Hardy a walk at second. Strike. And Ramirez gets one in on him. Ross responsible for the two base runners. Kim has faced Ramirez once, 0 for 1. 1 1 delivery on the way. It'll be outside. And a two ball, one strike count. Eight times this year, Ramirez has been up and down with the big club. Don't unpack your suitcase, son. <laughs> Two ball, one strike count. One around on it. That's his changeup. Real good pitch. Almost like a split finger as it drops. Two two and two down. Delivery to Kim. So as he's done so often, works the count. Three balls, two strikes, two away, two in scoring position. Top of the eighth inning. Adam Jones, the on deck batter. Orioles have the 5 3 lead. Ramirez set and delivers. Kim takes it and they're loaded. This is that right there. It's, uh, it's been right at the 400 on base percentage all year long. That open base, Mark Showalter put the right guy up. He's going to take that walk in this lineup over. Orioles have drawn six walks in the ballgame. 
these six pitchers. They've all can uh, contributed except for Barnes did not give up a wart. Two given up by the starter Drew Pomerantz. Loaded bases Wheaters Hardy. Kim. Adam Jones 0 for 4 in this one 0 for 7. In the two games. But he's hit over 290 against the Red Sox on the year. Four home runs and 11 RBIs against Boston. So they agree on how they're going to work here. Adam Jones. One hit one at bat. One home run <laughs> against Ramirez. Sacks full, two out. Mm. Almost. Hannigan reaching out to haul that one back in. Adams got 0 for 4 with the bases loaded this year. Ramirez the 1 0 delivery Adam foul tips it into the mitt 1 and 1 Ramirez's command uh, not too good he's uh, almost averaging six walks per nine and he's made some mistakes relies on that deceptive delivery that funky presentation he's uh, showing the Orioles hitters Ramirez have to be patient wait for a pitch on the plate. Jones foul just in that corner a few feet into foul territory Orioles are two for six with runners in scoring position in the game they have stranded five they've got three on here and a full house of fans quiet. One and two. Delivery by Ramirez down low. Blocked there by Hannigan. Make Ramirez feel a little bit better about varying uh, that change up. Well, here's the pitch. This is the one he wants to get him on. He does not want to go three and two. Oh, no. Two balls, two strikes, two down. They've gotten at him up high on pitches. Two two delivery on the way. Adam will ground it down to third. That's a foul ball. Talk about secondary lead. See where JJ Hardy is? Yeah. He oh. was he would have been safe at third base if that had been a fair ball and they tried for a force play at third. That's why we talk about the secondary leads can be so important even in a situation like this. Well, they're really always important. It's, it's unfortunate it doesn't get paid attention to uh, you know like it does whether you're playing defense or having in a bat because it can make a huge difference yeah. how you run the bases. Hard ground ball bobbled or tough to play and the guy's got to go to the bag to get a force out. You get a good secondary lead and you're there ahead of them. Yeah. Count remains two and two. And he strikes out. So Ramirez gets the strikeout. Orioles are retired. No runs on a hit. They leave the bases loaded.
five three lead a chance to add to it couldn't do it take a look at our Maryland live casino inside the numbers our oddities around baseball Daniel Murphy two for four tonight against the Mets he's extended his hitting streak to 18 games against his former team that's up there among the all time best White Sox scored each of their eight innings in which they batted and won 11 4 against the Indians Monday that tied an American League record scoring in all eight and the Red Sox scored each of the first seven innings Monday fifth time in their history that they had done that hitting in the all eight innings Red Sox have done that only once back in 1903. Kim's going to play in left field after coming on to pinch hit Bourne will play in right after pinch hitting. Brad Brock is on the mound as we go to the bottom half of the eighth Ramirez Shaw and Young. And the pitch on the inside corner for a strike from Brad. The other day, Brad Brock came on in the seventh. Michael Givens came on in the eighth. But Showalter was asked, Have you reversed the roles of those pitchers? He said, No, I just like the matchup in that particular game. I still want Brock in the eighth and Givens in the seventh. Tonight, the matchups, he wanted Brock in the seventh and the eighth. <laughs> right? <laughs> Tough to get the big outs here in Fenway Park at the end of a ball game. And Donnie Hart stepping up. Of course, Tommy Hunter stepping up as well. Brad Brock. Paint the fastball right now. That's a good sign. Ramirez 0 for 4 off the right hander. And that fastball is right there. Anthony's outside corner. Brock gets a strikeout. Ramirez with the question marks. One away in the eighth inning. Question of these, take a look at the pitch track. Beautiful pitches. All three fastballs, about as perfect as you can want. Inside, last two away and down. 96 miles an hour. Good luck hitting that one. That will bring Shaw to the plate, a double single in his first two at bats in the game. Flied out his last time up. Orioles put the shift on against him and Travis Shaw will take the pitch away for a ball. He too is 0 for 4 against Brad Brock. The defensive alignment putting scope way out there in right. 1 0 delivery by Brock making ball in the dirt. Yankees have won again. As they have shut out the Dodgers. Three to nothing in the ball game tonight. Ball down the line will curve foul. The Yankees in that wild card race, two games out behind the Orioles and Baltimore. They're now a game and a half out of the wild card with the victory tonight. That ball goes into the shift and beats it for a base hit. Not a lot of room to place one, but Shaw found it between Scope and Bourne and gets a single with one away here in the eighth inning. How do you do that? Drops it right in between Jonathan Scope, who's playing uh, shallow right field. Of course, Bourne, normal depth. A lot of room to slide it in there, and he does. Sean McDay at the plate. So, for the third time in the game, the Red Sox have the potential tying run at the plate. Young has drawn a walk, scored in the second, popped out in the third, another walk in the sixth. Oriole closer ready. On the way towards the gap, right center field playable. Bourne is right there and he's got it. Bourne was moved over towards that power alley, so he didn't have far to go. Yeah, he was filling it up, wasn't he? Boy, that right field line opened up, but good positioning there by Wayne Kirby. Well, that's two down. Orioles outfield coach. And Michael needs that. So the skipper on his way to the mound. 
with Zach Britton ready to go. Jackie Bradley Jr. Be coming to the plate with a runner on and two down. Going to have a discussion. And he's going to try to give uh, Zach another pitch or two. And there's the sign to the bullpen. So Zach Britton comes on a runner on here in the eighth inning. He'll face Bradley. Zach Britton, their closer into the ball game, trying to get this final out of the eighth inning. Zach Britton's pitch arsenal, power, fastball, regional breaking ball, .63 earned run average, perfect in his saves and save opportunities. 41 on the year for Britton. Opponents down to just the 152 batting average. Both lefties and righties having trouble with Zach Britton's fastball. 94%. Runners stay stranded for Britain. Runner on at first base. There are two down. And the pitch inside. Jackie Bradley Jr. Base hit. He is one for three in the ball game. One for six lifetime off Zach Britton. Zach is three for three this year against the Red Sox and saves. One run, four hits, four innings work. That's going to be the Hardy of base hit. He picks up the single going the other way. Two on, two down. Hannigan do up. The number nine hitter. Sandy Leon is coming up. He was the catcher in the ball game last night who started. So Leon will be the pinch hitter. Leon is 0 for 1 off Zach. 2 on, 2 out. Now the Red Sox out hitting the Orioles 9 8, but trailing it still by a score of 5 3. Opportunities in this ball game. Britain's delivery to him. Leon will foul it off. Well, Zach will get ahead of him. Gosh, does anybody have a bad uh, batting average with runners in scoring position? Leon nope. 365. He scored as many runs as the Red Sox have. You've got to have a lot, of, a lot of people getting big hits. Yeah. 
That'll be a chopper. It'll go to short. Hardy's got it on the big hop. Throw to first base, and Britton comes on and gets it done. No runs on two hits, no errors. Two more left on base. We go to the ninth, 5 3 0. Masson brought to you by Southwest Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. And by MT Bank, understanding what's important. Well, here at Fenway, good ball game. Final one of the three game set coming up tomorrow. Leon, who pinch hit, will stay on behind the plate for Hannigan. A bod in the bullpen if needed. We go to the ninth inning. Ramirez will stay on to start it. Two thirds of an inning in the eighth. Gave up a walk, but got out of it, leaving the bases loaded for the Orioles. It'll be Scope, Machado, and Trumbo do up against him. Another night where it's like everything could tighten in the race. Tampa Bay's beaten Toronto six to two. The Yankees have shut out the Dodgers three to nothing. Tigers lost to Minnesota eight to one. The Orioles got a chance to win. Ball up in the air to left field. He got all of it. Way back. Green Monster and goodbye. Home run. The first pitch delivered and Jonathan Scope delivers the long ball and a big added run to make it six three. Yeah, they've been working hard. Try to get that insurance run. Jonathan Scope, one swing in the bat. Some long home runs hit the first two games in the series. They have been tagged. And the Orioles get one from Scope. And they make it a 6 3 ball game. So Jonathan. Picking up number 24, RBI number 77, and a breaking ball inside to Machado. Take a look at the swing from Jonathan Scope. Boy, this fastball leaks back over the middle of the plate. Leon wanting it down and away. Goes out of the pack. And Manny Machado will foul that one off the end of the bat. Talk about an increase in outputs. As the long ball is concerned for Jonathan Scope, he has done that this year. 15 last year, he had 16 in 2014. One one delivery, chopper to short, long throw. Bogarts trying to one hop it over there, and got him. And look at that one. Machado hustling down the line. Good play right there by Bogarts, a young shortstop on the run. It was the one hopper to Ramirez Machado hustling down the line. Bang, bang play. Mm. Quick the gutting. 
They're taking a look at it though, and uh, not going to challenge. Good play by Bogarts to get the out. And he's talking to him as they go by. Mark Trumbo, a base hit, one for four in the ball game, one for seven in the first two. Trumbo DHing in this series, breaking ball, taken outside. Orioles with another three homer ball game. All six of the runs off home runs. Hardy three RBI homer. Reimold good for two. And Jonathan Scope a solo shot here in the ninth inning. Breaking ball again. Ramirez not getting it close enough. Count goes to two and oh. Trumbo trying to get himself right right now and a little bit of a funk at the plate. Jumpy. Delivery to Mark and the same pitch, same place. This is outside again. Three oh count on Trumbo. Chris Davis, the on deck batter. Ramirez delivery to him and that'll be there for a strike. First run given up by the Red Sox bullpen asked to do a lot tonight. Pomerantz five runs four hits two plus innings for the Red Sox starter. Embry Kelly Barnes Ross and Ramirez all in relief. There's an off speed breaking ball in there for a strike three and two. Bullpen has given up a run on five hits. And they will have worked seven innings. Three two delivery to him and will be chase tag put on. Two down. Change up from Ramirez. And Trumbo giving chase. Seeing the ball as well as he had uh, beginning of the year, that's for sure. So Ramirez will come out of there with two down, surrendering the home run to Scope to start it. And with two away here in the ninth inning, one more to the pen. Well, you can visit massinsports.com slash care first and vote for tonight's care first fearless player of the game. Live fearless with the names trusted for over 75 years. Care first, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. Scope for the big home run leading off the ninth inning. Abad. I take a look at his pitch arsenal. The fastball 57% of the time. The heater in the low 90s. That's the curve and the change. The EFIS. It down into the 50s for miles per hour. 3 3 3 earned run average for Abad. Opponents hitting just 224. Up at the lefties down to 145. 
That's why he's in there to try and get Chris Davis out of there. Davis has had one hit off him, a home run. Chris one for five against the bot. Run scored, second inning. Davis got on with a walk. He's had two walks, a strikeout, and a ground ball up, hitting at 226. 37 home runs, 81 RBIs, strike on the outside corner. Orioles putting up a big run here in the top of the ninth inning on that home run by Scope. Chris Davis, he's had 10 hits in his last 32 at bats in the air, left field. Young is here to put it away, and that'll do it. Orioles get one. One run, one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base for Jonathan Scope, leadoff batter against Ramirez. He delivers yet another long ball, and I do mean long. Lands down street, hello again. 6 3, bottom of the night. The long ball counting all six of them have the 6 3 lead and a little room with the home run by Scope for Zach to pick up the save. Going for number 42. Dustin Pedroia, top of the order, will lead it off. It'll be Pedroia, Bogarts, and Ortiz due up here in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's everybody. He hit 643 off Zach Britt. <laughs> Taking all the way, and it will be a strike. The draw up, a double, a single, a bases loaded walk, and he is grounded out. Could have had another hit, but a fine play by Hardy in the fourth inning took one away. And that pitch is going to be away for a ball. Seven game hit streak extended tonight for Pedroia. Britton has to get. The save in more than just three outs. Coming on to get the final out in the eighth inning. 1 1 delivery on the way. Pedroia will take that outside. 97. 2 and 1. Well, you know, Pedroia is going to be patient. He's willing to take his walk. Of course, he's red hot with the bat right now, but uh, low strikeouts. To get so many at bats. And that pitch is there. First strike. Fifth most difficult American League hitter to strike out is Pedroia. Working him away. Two ball, two strike count. Pedroia down to first base. Davis right there. He'll take it to the bag and a big first out. So Pedroia retired to start the bottom of the ninth inning. Great job by Zach Britt. That's meet the outside corner. Pedroia to reach out. Soft contact to Chris Davis for the first out. That'll bring Bogarts up. Trying to get a win here for Dylan Bundy. He'll go nine and five with the Orioles win. 
Pomerantz short outing would take the loss. He'd be 10 and 12 with just a two inning performance as a starter. The Orioles bullpen has given up nothing here in this ball game. They work their way through Hunter, Hart, Brock, and now Britain. Bogarts will take it for a strike. One for eight for Bogarts off the Oriole closer. And the swing over the top as so many do. Yeah, really amazing. Such good hitters. Uh, just unable to make the good contact on the Brit fastball. Darn near impossible if it's down by the knees. This outside with it this time. One ball, two strike count. Bogarts trying to get on. That's a big home run by Scope. Yeah, you get two on here to get that potential tying run to the plate. And that's pretty hard to do, period, much less against Zach Britton. One, two, delivery. Fouls it off. Zach will get ahead of him, a ball and two strikes. Two delivery on the way, and Bogarts just waves at it. Uh, an off speed pitch. Completely fooling him. That's good stuff right there. Bogarts, what? I didn't know he had a breaking ball. Backdoor breaking ball from Zach Britton. And how about the underwater hack by Bogarts? And then the look. Are you kidding me? Perfect pitch from Britton. Nice call by Matt Peters. One more to go for the W. David Ortiz will stand in. Nobody on. A base hit. One for four in the ball game. Down to first. That will be foul. Orioles one out away from setting up the rubber match tomorrow. This will improve the Orioles to five and three on their current road trip. And. They will be five and three in games played here at Fenway this year. Breton with the 0 1 delivery. Grounded into the shift. Jonathan Scope will handle it. Play to Davis, and that's the ball game. Well, after a 12 to 2 route last night by the Red Sox, baseball proves to be what it is a new day every day. And the Orioles come away with a 6 3 win. Bundy is nine and five, Pomerantz ten and twelve, and Britain gets his forty.